it is a sellout at Memorial Stadium when Texas A&M hooks up with Texas. About 80,000 people will be here. And there remains the possibility that the Longhorns can go to the Cotton Bowl. Texas can go if they win tonight. And Houston loses or ties tonight in its game with Rice. Houston can go only by knocking off Rice tonight, and they are prohibitive favorites. And SMU has a chance to go if Texas and Houston lose or tie tonight. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. One thing before we get going on this game. We do have cameras. We do have people stationed at the Astrodome in Houston. A game starts a little bit later, but we'll give you the progress of Houston in its drive to get to the Cotton Bowl. But now we come to the drive for Texas and Texas A&M. As we said earlier on Sports Center, Paul, when you get Auburn and Alabama, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Army, Navy, that's all of those wrapped up into the Aggies and the Longhorns. Well, yeah. There's not that much talk about Cotton Bowl here, and it's amazing. I mean, they know that, that Houston must lose to Rice. I mean, that's just that, that's the only way they get there. But when you talk to the people at Texas, and you talk to the people at Texas A&M, this game is so important. This is the final game of the year for these two teams, other than the bowl game for Texas. But I'll tell you one thing right now, Jim. When you look at this game tonight, you watch the defensive play, I guarantee you you're going to see hitting like we've seen the last couple of weeks. A couple of All-Americans on defense for Texas and one who should be for Texas. A&M. We'll be back in a moment to take a look at the coaches and hear what they have to say of this game tonight. Brought to you by Exceptionally Smooth Michelo. Where you're going, it's Michelo. And there's the man, or I should say there's the steer, Bevo 12. The mascot of the Longhorns of Texas. We'll meet the coaches in a moment. And it is Texas, and Coach Jackie Sherrill talks about the Longhorns and especially their defense. Well, the game we're going to see Saturday night, or the team we're going to see Saturday night, will not be the team that played Baylor, if that's what you're asking. And, uh, you know, they're a football team that's got a lot of you know, heritage to them, character. And, uh, you know, they've been there before, and you know, they had some disappointments. But yet, like I said, you know, that when they, they play us, they'll play us very similar when they play the SMU and play TCU. I think the biggest problem that Jackie understands is can he score against Texas? He knows about their strong defense. They are so good. He thinks he can stop them offensively. Texas has not been that powerful this year, Tex er, uh, offensive-wise. Well, you know as well as I do that the Longhorns stop themselves. They're averaging four and a half turnovers per game. They had nine against Houston, six against Baylor. What does Fred Akers think? <laughs> Let him tell you. Yeah, we've got to be leading the world. I, I don't know how to how to explain it or how to cure it. I know it just makes you want to throw up every time you look at that one statistic. And it's been uh, one of the reasons we've been so up and down this year. You know, Paul, there have been times when a fellow fumbles the old story, you go to bed with the football or whatever, but when you have 44 turnovers, how do you, and Fred Aker said, I don't know how to coach to stop all this. Well, I think that, that is a major problem for him, but if you look at their record through this year, you know, they've lost a lot of players last year, especially to the pros, but here's a team that's young, very, very young, and they've done very well. If they could have eliminated the mistakes, here's a team that may have, I'm saying may have been undefeated this year as young as they are so if you take a look at the coaching job that Fred Akers has done with this Dallas or with this uh, yeah this Texas team here then you then you got to understand what he's going through and those things I think they can work out they are a young team he's happy with this season he's not happy with the turnovers he already said that but I think he's happy with his football team basically you know for the first time ever a team is going to the Cotton Bowl no matter which team it is with two losses in the Southwest Conference that's never happened before SMU was all through in the conference we saw them last week. Texas and Houston play tonight. They're both 5-2, and two, but because of who beat whom and who last went, you know that if Houston wins tonight over Rice, and we will have live reports throughout our game, Houston goes to the Cotton Bowl. But if Houston should stumble, as Auburn stumbled this afternoon, then we have a different deal as far as the Cotton Bowl is concerned. Well, we've seen some strange things happen. This is the third week in a row now that we're looking at the bowl picture and how it may change. You know, we did the Georgia-Auburn uh, game, and it, all of a sudden we thought that Florida would get knocked out of it because of, of the probation. And then all this, last week we go back into the same mess again, and here we are again for the third straight week. I think it's exciting. I really do. And I think, you know, the, the teams feel it. 
the pressure. But again, let me just repeat one thing that I said before. The fact that Texas, not so much looking at the Cotton Bowl, when you talk to the players, they would love to go there, don't get me wrong. But they're thinking mainly about Texas A&M. And so are we. And we will come back and meet the players in just a moment. The players of Texas and Texas A&M. The players of the Aggies under Jackie Sherrill on your left. And the players of Texas under Fred Akers on your right. The players, when we come back to Memorial Stadium and a sellout crowd in Austin. complete rundown of highlights, scores, and more. It's all happening here Sunday on ESPN. The playing of the National Anthem and one of the biggest rivalries in all of football. This is the 91st meeting between the Aggies and Texas. There have been all kinds of jokes about these two schools and about the way they play football, one way or the other. But as evidence against TCU last week, the Aggies do have good players and can win this game. Well, they certainly do. We're going to meet a few of those, but, but they do. They have, they have in, in skill position, not a great football team, but a good team. Jackie Sherrill may be building for the future, but he's got enough to win tonight. Let's meet some of the Aggie players. At the beginning of the year, Craig Stump never thought he'd be quarterbacking his Texas A&M team tonight against Texas because Kevin Murray was the number one quarterback, but Murray got hurt in the third game of the season. Now here Stump is talking about tonight's big game. You know, knowing that, uh, that Texas A&M and Texas is the, you know, one of the biggest rivals in the country and uh, just playing against them is going to be tough enough because they're, they're a well-disciplined team and they're in the top, and they're in the top 20. And uh, so I think it's going to be a good game. The best offensive lineman the Aggies have is Matt Darwin at center, but tonight, because of Tony the Great of Texas, he's going to be playing guard the block on him. And Darwin looks back to last week's big win, big win over TCU. This win last week against TCU meant a lot to us just because guys have been working hard and not giving up, and we hadn't had the kind of uh, rewards maybe that we expected. But, um, but last week really meant a lot to us, and it showed us uh, some, uh, some positive things, you know, about uh, we were coming together and we were learning how to win, and I think this week would be a win here would be great. And uh, that's what we're going to go up there and play our hearts out. Ray Childress. Look at a defensive end, six foot seven, 280 pounds, 16 tackles last week. This man has nine quarterback sacks this year. Remember, he is six foot seven, 280 pounds. Just a fine football player and a great defensive end. When you talk defense, you talk Johnny Holland, number 11. Not big as linebackers go. Look at this, 143 tackles. He's six foot three, but he only weighs 211 pounds. Watch, you'll see number 11 come into your picture on number 11. Bang, right there. That's what linebackers are supposed to do. You're looking at those tough players? Texas A&M thinking, wouldn't it be nice? We've seen this the last few weeks, Jim. Wouldn't it be nice to knock a bowl-bound team out of a picture? But they're not going to knock them out of a picture, but they can beat them. Wouldn't it be nice for the Aggies to beat Texas at any time here? They've only beaten them six times here in history. Well, let us now meet the players of Texas. And they have been having problems, as we said, with turnovers. 44 so far this year. Nine against Houston, six against Baylor. But these fellows hope to do the job tonight. For Texas on offense, this man, Terry Orr, carries much of the load. And when he hyperextended his knee against Baylor last week, leadership went out of the Texas offense. How much he'll play tonight? Will they play tailback or fullback? We don't know. Which does he prefer to play? Well, I think uh, I would rather play fullback when I'm having a good night blocking. And I think that uh, when I'm having a good night running, I would prefer to play tailback. But, you know, either position really doesn't make that much difference to me. Texas has a very fine tight end. His name, William Harris. 29 receptions, leads the team in receptions, 18.8 yards per catch. Only a sophomore, 6'5", 234 pounds. They like to go with him deep. He can also block very well, but when he gets in the open field, defensive backs have a tough time catching him. He is a future All-American. This man is a bona fide All-American, and maybe no argument at all. In or out of the state of Texas, he may be the best defensive lineman in the country. Tony the Great talks about the preparation, the intensity for tonight's game with the Aggies. 
I tell you what, we have the same intensity we have towards TCU and uh, after defeat against Houston. So if anything, it's going to help us out. We've had our best workout this week, and if that's any kind of indication, I think you're going to look for a great game tonight. Tony DeGrade is not the only Texas All-American on defense. How about Jerry Gray, the free safety? Six interceptions already this year. And Jerry Gray, playing his last game at home, talks again about last week's loss and tonight's game. Well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a big confidence factor because uh, everyone, we want to go out there and uh, this is our last ball game. We want to redeem ourselves. We lost last week and uh, we want to end on a winning note. And two, we want to hopefully get back into the Cotton Bowl. We're going to root Rice on to beat Houston. <laughs> <We've>, <laughs> he's terrific. You know, talking to him yesterday, we've seen some of their All-Americans at Texas. There's a man I want you to watch tonight. You're going to see him. We'll show him to you close up. Number 33, Edwin Simmons, 6'4", 225-pound running back and he is sensational in this state of texas this big state there's only one game that really matters and that is texas and texas a&m reveille is ready after all the mascot of texas a&m is retiring after tonight's game the nikon fg have deferred their option until the beginning of the second half so alan smith products do make your world a better place. In today's army, when artillery goes to the field, so does high technology. Computers, laser-guided missiles, and teamwork honed to a split-second response. Only the Army gives you this kind of training with just a two-year enlistment. You can do it in the Army. The Aggies have won the toss, but have deferred their option until the beginning of the second half. So Alan Smith of Texas A&M will kick off to Texas. Deep are Kevin Nelson, number 32 on the far side, right-hand side of your picture, and Tony Tillman, who is on the near side, number 11. And so the game of the state of Texas, Texas and A&M, is underway. Smith kicks off. That is Nelson at the seven-yard line. Across the 20 and up to about the 25-yard line, where he's knocked down there. Out of the Todd Dodge coming on the field, a junior out of Port Arthur who has had 17 interceptions talking with Freddie Akers. His running backs will wait to see. We do see Terry Orr, 37, out there, and Kevin Nelson, 32. So Orr will go to the fullback slot. Bill Boy Bryant, number 80, is a big play wide receiver. Brent Duhon, teammate of Dodgers back at Port Arthur, Texas, number 7, the other wide receiver. William Harris, about whom Paul talked, 95, the tight end. Wright and Stewart, the tackles. Black Bear and Chester, the guards, and Chilton at center. That is Nelson, the tailback, and Nelson doesn't get much, does he? Across the way, the tackle is made by Ken Ford, the inside linebacker. It is Ray Childress, 53, Sammy O'Brien, the only starting freshman, 90, Rob Sadler, 99, the front three, Todd Howard, 73, Steve Bullitt, 66, the outside linebackers, Ken Ford, who made the stop, 19, Johnny Holland, 11, the inside, the corners are James Flowers, Darrell Austin, and Lance Jackson, and Wayne Asbury are your safety now. And again, Kevin Nelson carrying the football. This time he's being strung out to about the 31 or 32 yard line. It'll be third down and short. James Flowers, a cornerback on that side, strung him out and made the stop. There's Jackie Sherrill at College Station. He's 115, lost 16, tied one after an outstanding record at Pittsburgh where he had three straight 11 and one years and was 59 and one. Fred Akers is the winningest coach in the Southwest Conference active from the 31 yard line. Duhon is coming to the ball game and is wide to the left and down his line left. Third down and short. Bob Dodge coming to the short side of the field and has the first down. Dodge is across the 40 yard line and it's first down Texas. Todd Dodge under a lot of fire this week. Oh, I know, but Orr, gonna, or first of all, Terry Orr's going to get a good block. That block's to the inside. Now, watch number 19, Ken Ford. Well, uh, on this, we'll see him. See 19 in the picture? Watch the move that Todd Dodge puts on him. Right back Whoops. to the inside. There goes the linebacker, Ken Ford, the second leading tackler on this team. Todd Dodge 
first down. Bill Boy Bright wide to the left, Duhon to the right. First down from the 40. And Nelson, the tailback again, carrying the ball. It gets up to the 44-yard line. Stop there. Ray Childress, number 53, in on the tackle. Well, I'm going back to what Terry War said. If I'm ever good at my blocking, I prefer to play fullback. If I'm ever good at my running, I prefer to be the tailback. But with the injuries to Jerome Johnson and Roddy Robinson, they've had to put Terry War in at fullback. He's got a great attitude to have with a player, though. That make any difference. Want me to block, I'll block. Second down and six from the Texas 44. And there's Kevin Nelson again. Gets up to about the 48-yard line. And again, it'll be third down and short. Tackle made by Steve Bullitt, number 66, and Ken Ford, number 19. There's no, there's no level loss between these two teams, I can tell you that. We were watching the, in, in the warm-ups. Bill Boy Bryant was standing on the sidelines just looking around. The Texas A&M team walked, ran off the field, and they did almost took him with him. They, he, they kind of bumped him in the arm. Didn't, didn't do any damage to him. Third down and a couple of yards. Scoreless game. Bryant left and Duhon right. Last time, remember, on third and short, Dodge rolled toward the cameras. Scored this way. This time he gives to Orr, and the first man to hit him was Childress. And he did not get it. Oh, it is fourth and one, and now let's see what Fred Akers does. Fourth down one, almost at midfield. I guess he'll last for a measure. They had to get to the 50. Here comes Terry. Look at the offensive line moving out. Gene, Gene, the coach machine, number 74, Gene Chilton. They go right at the center. Black bar, the left guard, 69, Chester, 72, and they want to go up the middle. Did not make it. They'll punt it. No decision here at all. John Telchik comes in to kick the ball away, and Jimmy Hawkins is the deep man, standing back on his 10. Good return, man, and a good punter. Now that's the booming punt into the win. And he's going to let it get into the end zone if it can in the zone. So it's come out to the 20-yard line, and the Aggies have held Texas to one first down. A 51-yard punt, but they'll only net 31 on that. No score. The Aggies have the ball. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Introducing the new fuel-injected Tech 4 engine for 1985 S10. 10% more horsepower and 22% more torque than last year's standard engine. So bring on the work, bring on the play, you got the guns, go all the way. And now, Chevy's made it possible for dealers to pass along special factory incentives on selected S10s with the Tech 4 engine. Nothing works like a Chevy. Chevy truck. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret... It's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. Tonight's game from Austin brought to you by Chevrolet. We we'll invite you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. Craig Stump, number nine, brings them out. With Thomas Sanders, 45, Roger Vick, 43, the running back. Sanders is the tailback, and they'll run most of the time, but they give it to the up man here. That is Vick, the fullback, who picks up a couple of yards. Jimmy Teal, 23. Jeff Nelson, 8, are your wide receivers. Mark Lewis, 86, the tight end. Reeves and Williams are the tackles. Stedman and Darwin are the guards. Matt Darwin moves to guard to block on Tony the Great. And Matt Wilson, the freshman, is playing center. It's official what we all knew. We now know for sure. Doug Flutie is the Heisman Trophy winner. Just about. Second down at about 8 from the 22. And this is Craig Stump, and he's racked up. That is Bruce Gorner, number 85, the defensive end. And let's give you the rest of that defense. He's at one end, James McKinney, 87 at the other. Tony the Great, 99. Bill Hepcock, 68 the tackles. The linebackers, Ty Allard, 48. Tony Edwards, 63. June James, 62. The corners, Tony Griffin, 16, starting over James Lott tonight. And Tony Tillman, number 11. And your safeties are Stephen Bragg, 6. 
And Jerry Gray, the All-American, too. Now they've got five defensive backs as Locke goes out on the field on third and long, expecting the pass, the first pass of the night in the game. Takes up back, dumps it out, has his hand. That is Walker, and Walker got the first down across the 40. Well, as you will see, Cobb Dodge throw to his Jefferson High School teammate uh, from Port Arthur, Fred Duhon. You'll see Craig Stump of Port Arthur Jefferson throw to Shea Walker of Port Arthur Jefferson. He'll, he'll throw it to, to Walker, but watch here. Tillman, number 11, is the quarterback that was covering Walker. He got caught on the switch to the inside, and what happens, Walker goes the outside real quick, did a pivot, moved back to the inside. Tillman couldn't stay with him. Throwers and catches, all from Jefferson High and Port Arthur, Texas. First down A&M. They give it to the up man who is Roger Vick, number 42. Very strong runner. And he picks up a couple of yards only. And you will see down at the bottom there, Tony Edwards and Tony the Great. Now, Tony the Great is the All-American we talked about. 13 sacks on the year in the running for the Lombardi Trophy, which will, will be announced next Tuesday. And also, like so many others, not that many, but other football players, professional and college, is quite an artist. I mean, watercolors and oils and oil. Gentlemen. Second down. And eight to go from the 44 of Texas a and and Stump is going to throw him second down. Has his man on the down and up, but threw behind him, and it was almost picked off. Intended for Nelson, and Tony Tillman was watching Nelson, and the ball almost hit him. It's third down. Well, they are blocking on the great now. Darwin, as you mentioned, is going to move out from center to play guard to block. Now, that's not the man really that's blocking him. It's Doug Williams, 75. Look at the great. Whoa. He put his hand right in his face. It's called in your face. Hi, Mom, Dad, everybody in Hampton, Virginia. James Lott comes back in as the nickelback on third and long. Last time, remember, Stump hit Shea Walker across the middle. They have three wide receivers in there now. And Stump has the time. And now he's going to run out of it and will be able to pick up the first down. Gets a good block downfield. Stump is inside the 35-yard line. Steps out at the 30. And the Aggies continue to roll. Tony Tillman was there to knock him out of bounds. And when you go with five defensive backs, what happens to linebackers, when they drop off, they drop off and start covering people and forget about the quarterback, thinking that the defensive line's going to get to the quarterback. Now watch what Stump does. The defensive line, there's two people down, including DeGrate. He moves up. Look, at it takes him almost 12 yards before you see an orange shirt, and all of a sudden Stump's out of bounds at the 30-yard line first down. Nine That's minutes up. to go, first quarter, no score, 26-yard run for Stump. Ball of the 30th, Texas. And checking off at the line of scrimmage. Five seconds left on the play clock, but Stump gets the snap. And now, a bump and run. And they're bumping downfield. Nelson, the intended receiver, and he and Tony Tillman got hooked up on the far sideline. Oh, we'll take a look at Stump setting up, Jim. He gets back, and he has confidence in his pocket. The blocking up front, he sets it, but he's looking at the one man the entire way, and he follows through, and then somebody follows through in his face. That's Ty Allard, number 48. Charlie Allard. There's Jackie Sherrill. By the way, remember the Houston Rice game. If Houston wins, they go to the Cotton Bowl. If they lose, Texas by winning can go. We'll start in a couple of minutes, and we will have scoring updates for you throughout our telecast to tell you who's finally going to wind up in the Cotton Bowl. Dallas U has wound up in the Jigger Bowl, if you didn't hear. Here's Stump back. Being chased, gets the ball away, and that's for Nelson, and it looked like he was going to be picked off, didn't it? Looked like he was going to be picked off by Tony Griffin. Griffin starting tonight over a lot on the corner. McKinney was the guy pressuring Stump. Now, let's take a look at McKinney. Now, he's coming in, gets away from his blocker. He's after Stump, and he just goes by him. Stump throws the ball up in the air and almost picked off. Well, Don't now it away. is third down and ten. No score, we repeat. 8.48 to go. Texas picked up one first down, had to punt the ball away. On two occasions, the Aggies have had third and long. Stump passed for one first down and ran for another. Now it is third and long again. Third and ten. Three wide receivers. Blitz Stump down the sidelines, and it is caught inside the 20-yard line. That should be a good enough for first down. Teal goes up and gets it from his... Quarterback Craig Stump. Griffin, the defender, on that side. 
First down at the 19. All right, Stump sees the blitz coming, but he's going to stay with Teal. There's Griffin. He's going down. Just a good move back to the inside. Needed 10 yards. Got 11. You know, A&M, they have not scored yet against Akers' team, but they have outscored their opposition 120 to 77 in the first half. But in the second half, the Aggies have fallen and have been outscored 128 to 88. So if they start, they normally get off to a quick start. But they have won five and lost five. Texas, of course, has had a much better season than that, 7-2-1. and one. Time has been called, 8.20 to go. There is still no score on the field. And an official is coming over to the sideline, so we'll take time out ourselves. I like small cars. We need more room. Today, Chevrolet has a car for you, the mid-sized celebrity. Feel the room, ride in style, go in comfort every mile. Enjoy mid-sized room with economy and a price that's surprisingly small. Celebrity. Lots of stuff here. If this is today's Chevrolet, I like it. And we need it. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Live it. Chevy. With all their space age technology, most microwave ovens still cook too many things unevenly. Undercooked here, overcooked there. A problem you won't have with the Sharp Carousel 2 convection microwave. Thanks to Sharp's turntable design that cooks food evenly at every turn. After all, what's the point of owning a microwave if it can't even do the little things right? Sharp Carousel 2 microwave ovens. From Sharp Minds come Sharp Products. Tomorrow, Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie is the star. Relive highlights from his record-setting collegiate career. Tomorrow on ESPN. Sunday night at 8 o'clock, ESPN will honor Doug Flutie as he was honored today with winning the Heisman Trophy. That is official. But I don't know why they waited so long. Paul McGuire made that announcement the night that Boston College played North Carolina and Flutie threw six touchdown passes about six different ways. <laughs> he's something, isn't he? Oh, and I, 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 he's got to go in the pros right away. Moon, half moon, shining over Memorial Stadium. Hook them horns. But right now... In a little bit of trouble, and we understand it is because of the clock. Now, they have put nine more seconds on the clock. It was 8.20, but he took the timeout. The official has now gone to Akers and is going over to Jackie Sherrill. Now we look up, and it shows 8.29. So they must have lost nine seconds somewhere. The way A&M's moving the ball, throwing the football, Jim, not running. Now, even, even when the quarterback stump picked up about 18 yards, that was a passing play, and he ran on it. I would stay to the air against Texas. Don't try to run against it. You don't have the beef up front. You're taking a look at the series record, and you can see that. But let me tell you something, as I told you earlier. Here, in Memorial Stadium, A&M has not done well at all. They've won six out of 40... Six games. They've tied one. The other 39 have been won by Texas. And now it's first down. The Aggies at the Texas 19. No score. And there's your tailback, and that is Thomas Sanders. There's a story to itself. They didn't even list him in the press guide this year because of an ankle injury at 82. Disc problems last year. He had surgery. They didn't list him, and the doctor said, young man, I don't think that you should play football again. But Sanders figures he could and would. Came out and asked for a trial. The doctors cleared him, and here he is. And he is their leading ball carrier. It's a great uh, story. It really is. A gain of three at a second down and seven. And here he goes again. Sanders. Sanders down to about the 14-yard line, and it'll be third down and four. Gary Gray, the All-American free safety, number two, came up to make the stop. And at third and four, Paul, this is about the shortest distance they've had to go to pick up a first down. They've had third and 12, third and eight, third and 10, picked them all up. Now it's third down and about four. Waiting in the wing is Eric Franklin. Tony Franklin plays in the pros now and has the all-time scoring record with the Aggies. The time is out on the field. They're going to try to decide what it is they're going to do on third down and six. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as... GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. 
Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret, it's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. You know what I don't like about dandruff? Dandruff shampoos. I'm afraid they won't leave my hair the way I like it. This shampoo cares for my hair. It's the only one with a self-balancing formula. Puts dandruff protection where I need it, on my scalp, not on my hair, and it conditions where I need it. Leaves my hair looking and feeling good. Yeah, my shampoo's a dandruff shampoo, but it's today's head and shoulders, and it cares for my hair. Tuesday, Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers stage a round ball rumble with Notre Dame's Fighting Irish. See the Hot Shots live Tuesday on ESPN. M. Simpson, Paul McGuire, 7.07 to go, no score, first quarter. They've just kicked off on the Houston Rice game. We'll keep your prized and the run for the Cotton Bowl. Right now, the Aggies are trying to derail Texas of any kind of chance for the Cotton Bowl. Big play, third down and about four. And stump. Throws it out here to Vic is fullback, and Vic is in big trouble. A loss of five yards led by June James, number 62, the weak side linebacker Jerry Gray, and Tony Edwards also in on the tackle. And now it is fourth down. And that is going to bring on Eric Franklin, a walk-on, and he's the younger brother, as we said, of Tony Franklin. And last week, when he finally got a chance to kick, Eric Franklin missed the point after touchdown, but then he came on to kick field goals of 50 and 45 yards. This will be from the 27, 37-yard field goal attempt, and it is good, and the Aggies are on the board. It is Texas A&M 3 and Texas nothing. 6.27 to go, first quarter. An important message for accident victims. If your injury is from an auto, truck, train, or motorcycle accident, construction site, or offshore rig, remember this. All insurance companies have teams of lawyers to protect them. Do you? You really need an experienced lawyer of your own to deal with other lawyers to get the best settlement possible. Call Jim Adler of Adler & O'Connor at 953-9400. You can trust him because he cares about you. That's 953-9400. If you're looking for complete, accurate, and up-to-the-minute sports information, take down these numbers right now. Scoreline is a special service for people who like to keep up with sports and want minute-to-minute -minute information on injuries, weather, and game conditions. You'll get time changes as well as up-to-the-minute scores during games and final scores from around the country. Scoreline is a free service with expert opinions from some of the best handicappers around the country. Our complete information is given slowly so you don't miss what you want. Call Scoreline at these numbers right now. The information you need is waiting for you now. Smith, the senior, continues to do the kicking off. And he'll kick off again, this time to Tony Tillman and Kevin Nelson. Here is Alan Smith. As you can see, he gained a little weight for a kicker, but I know another kicker that's gained a little weight, too. Has not missed a meal. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Smith to kick off, and I'm up by three. And the Longhorns about to get the football. Remember last time, they got a single first down and then had to pump the ball away. Our referee tonight is Wendell Sheldon. He says we're ready to go. And this is Nelson again over at the three-yard line. 15 and nearly to the 20-yard line, and that is about all. Put down there by James Barrett. There's Bevo. It's a sad story, but of course everybody likes steak. But the first Bevo they ever had, about four years after his introduction, students and players from Texas and Texas A&M sat down and had steaks that used to be Bevo. <laughs> well, they don't do that anymore. As a matter of fact, that ended Bevo for a little while. Then when they brought him back, they brought him back on the fact that he was strictly on loan. Now, Edwin Simmons, the, folk, the person that Paul talked about, big, tall tailback, is in there. But it's the up man who gets the ball, Terry Orr, the fullback. Now, Edwin Simmons is 6'4", 226, a sophomore, but his knees have had to have arthroscopic surgery. Ray Childers, 53, 6'7", 280 pounds. I think it just takes on Stewart, number 78, moves him out of the way, gets in on the play. Big man, moves well. Second down and seven. The Aggies used better than five minutes in going to 60 yards with the 37-yard field goal. 
is Todd Dodge going nowhere at all. Lance Jackson right there with him. The strong safety. Jim, I think there's a mix-up in the backfield because he was, uh, Edwin Simmons, number 33, came through, and Dodge looked like he went to hand him the ball. He didn't take it. Well, remember that this is the first week that Simmons worked out any day, and he worked out the entire week. He has been hurt, and he has been sparingly used, but his number's 33, and he is in there. Now, here's a third down and long play. Third and eight for Texas. In balance line again to this side. Dodge rolling to this side, looking to run all the way, and is not going to get the first down. Not looking to throw. Ken Ford, number 19, came up along with Johnny Holland, number 11, the inside linebackers. They can fly. And Texas will have to kick the ball away again, Paul. Well, this is another long way to go. He had like 13 or 14 yards to run. Todd Dodge moving for the outside, break back to the inside. Terry Orr, 37, is there to block for him. It's a, just a piece of the man, but Dodge gets back to the inside. Missed it by two yards. Don Telchik to do the kicking with Jimmy Hawkins standing inside his own 30-yard line. Hawkins has returned one this year for a touchdown. Not this one. This is angling away from him, and it's going to... Well, it's going to get an AMM bounce, and it's going to be Aggie's ball at the 42-yard line. A reminder, did you see the Skins game? I'm not talking about the Redskins. I'm talking about the golf game between Palmer... Nicholas Watson and Gary Player. Well, it happened last weekend, and we'll show you the final nine holes this weekend, Sunday night at 8.30, when the Golden Bear wins all that money. Don Telchik is the kicker, barefooted kicker. Now, watch. Look at the concentration. Look at his foot. It must, his toes, I think, end up, up, up straight up in the air. He just missed the ball, Jim. Went off to the side of his foot, to the inside of his foot. Anthony Tony, 25, a junior, has checked in as the fullback. Sanders remains the tailback for the Aggies. Great deal position. And that's Tony. He is a much quicker man, and the flag goes down. And this could be our first holding call tonight. Thomas Aldridge made the stop, number 97. He's been battling an ankle injury. Gets up. Now they're going to tell us what's going on here. And while they tell us, there's Wendell Sheldon. It's going to be holding. The umpire is Joe Darden. Buddy Coleman is the linesman. The line judge is Don George. The field judge is George Slatke. And Ron Murphy is the back judge. That's our crew tonight in the Southwest Conference game, which has the Aggies leading the Longhorns 3-0 with 4.23 to go first quarter. Stump is 3 for 6 in passing, 27 yards. This will move the Aggies back to the 32. Even though it's going to put the first one. 20. This is throwing down for Texas A&M because they've gotten some good results from throwing the ball. Even though Stump had to run a couple of times, it still ended up in, 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 a, in a positive note. Jeff Nelson wide to the right. Jimmy Teal to the short side. They're not showing the eye. Split backs. Stump hands the ball off to Tony, and Tony is dragged down by Bill Hefcock, a senior out of Garland, Texas. And also Jerry Gray, the All-American free safety. Jerry Gray reads so well. I remember when we did the Auburn game here, talking to Pat Dye, and I know he must not be talking to anybody today mm. after that game, but talking to Pat Dye, he said, it is a must that you have Jerry Gray on the ground. You must have someone blocking him at all times because if you don't, you will not get the long breakaway play. They split their tight end, Mark Lewis, about seven to eight yards to the right. Dump back to throw. He's going for Lewis. And Lewis has caught the ball at the 36-yard line. Stephen Braggs can do nothing about it. After all, Lewis is 6'2". Braggs is under six feet. Braggs did not get position on this ball, Jim. Now Stump goes back in. He is looking at Mark Lewis the entire way. Braggs is on him. But watch it where Braggs is. He's behind him. He jumped too soon, misread the play, looking at the receiver's eyes, never turned back to look where the ball was. And then Mark Lewis, number 86, makes the catch first down inside the 40. What big plays there have been tonight have been by the Aggies. First down from nearly the 35-yard line. And this is Sanders again. Breaks one tackle, breaks another, and gets down near the 25-yard line. Very close to another first down. Jerry Gray makes the stop. Along with June James. Well, the Aggies have dominated this first quarter. Texas has one first down and had to punt twice. 
a young ball club. As we came on the air, as they come out to the measurement, Paul, you said that they, and I may have gone over some people's heads, that the Texas Longhorns lost 22 men to the pros. They lost more than 22 men, but 22 men made it in a professional football league. That's the kind of talent that went from this team. There's the first down for the Aggies. And it really does. It gives you an idea of the coaching of Fred Akers to put the team to come back and do as well as they have done this year. You can see that Texas beat Texas Tech. But A&M lost. Texas has had much the better record within the conference, as everybody knows. By the way, Texas tonight has 32 total yards. The Aggies, 102. First down. And that's the up man, Tony, again, dragging Gray with him inside the 15-yard line. First down, the Aggies. Well, coming off that win over Texas Christian, A&M is doing very well. Here comes Tony, just taking the blocking. has got to be good when you hand off straight to the fullback. He's blocking Jerry Gray downfield, making the tackle. But that's a little bit too late because it is a first down. You know the name we've not called but maybe once tonight? The Great. The Great. Well, you will. Oh, I know that. Here's Stump putting it up for Teal, and Teal does not make the catch, and the flag goes down. And I think it's going to be interference on John Hagee, the freshman out of San Antonio, number 17. You know, last year, A&M led 13 to nothing. At the end of the first half, it was 14-13 Texas. They went on to get 45 total points. And the Longhorns are getting off to the same kind of start tonight. Hagee on Teal. Hagee was just looking at Teal, and this is just that little alley-oop down the sideline to Neil. Now, oh, did he interfere? Did he interfere? Him? <laughs> Almost knocked his socks off. Watch Hagee, number 17, come in. He, he's pretending like he's going at the ball. That's a smart thing to do, but you can't go in and run into the receiver. The ball is, they put it down at the two-yard line. Mike January, another linebacker, comes in, and they take out Hagee. Well, they have four linebackers in. And now look at this. Put the backfield. Great D, Tony, touchdown. Anthony Tony scores his fifth touchdown of the year. And I tell you, the Aggies don't score many touchdowns running all year long. Well, they're going over here to Stedman's side, and they just blow everybody right off the line of scrimmage. Look at because Tony was not hit until he was already in the end zone. Here it comes. Take a look to the right of your screen. The blocking is blocking down. Stedman's there. Reeves is there. Touchdown, Tony. And now Franklin adds the extra point. And with 2.18 to go in the first quarter, it is 10 to nothing. The Aggies. How about that? Well, a lot of bowls. We don't know where Texas is going yet for sure. But here's what we have on ESPN, the California Bowl, Toledo and Nevada, Las Vegas, Independence Bowl, Virginia Tech at the airport, Holiday Bowl, Brigham Young. See all those votes today on ABC, whether they should be number one or not against Michigan. The Aloha Bowl, well, SMU or Texas. We know Notre Dame is there, but we've got it. The Blue Honor Bowl, Texas Christian and West Virginia. The Rose Bowl, Paul and I will be there, Southern Cal and Ohio State. And Paul and I will be in Yokohama, Japan for the Rico Japan Bowl, the college all-star game on Saturday, January the 12th. Yokohama, 58 yards, five plays. Only a little bit more than two minutes. And Franklin, or rather Smith, again to kick off with Tillman and Nelson, the deep men, again set up the same way. Nelson on your right and Tillman on your left. And Texas looking for some offense. Better find some soon. Aggies, remember, they have a 5-5 five and five record. There's the Houston Rice score, and we'll give you updates if anything happens there. But while Texas was losing last week, this ball club A&M was bumping TCU 35-21. Now they're going to let this ball go through the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Todd Dodds, they say, had an outstanding week of practice after all of the flack he took. Fred Akers said, don't read the newspapers. After six turnovers, not all of which were his doing, but a lot of folks remember the uh, Houston game in which he was intercepted five times and only completed a couple of passes. 
Here's Tom Dodge coming back. Terry Orr will remain the fullback. Edwin Simmons, the big man, stays in as a tailback. 116 total yards for the Aggies, 32 for Texas. First down Longhorns, and it looked like a mix-up again there with Simmons and Dodge, but he throws the ball, and that's a nice catch by the tight end, William Harris. And Harris has the first down, and the Longhorns have their first big play, and for the first time are in Aggie territory at the 47. Jim, we talked in the opening about William Harris and what great hands he's got. And he does. John Holland is trying to cover him. Now, there's the number one tackler, John Holland, the linebacker. He's got a linebacker on a tight end. But look where he catches the ball. Over the shoulder. That is a tough catch in itself. Holland had no chance. He had excellent coverage. 33 yards, Paul. And maybe even more than that, a flag is down. Well, Harris making some moves, getting in the second there, but it was an excellent catch. Now what happened? Well, the flag went down. We saw a bunch of people around Harris over there, but they've not stepped off anything yet. Rob Morshell, who was a quarterback last year, has come in, and maybe and there's a tailback today. He was asked after quarterbacking a bundle of games to return kicks and play some tailback. Okay, here's Wendell Shelton. That's against the Aggies, so on top of the 36-yard pickup, they'll tack on some more. And that moves Texas back in business. 15 big ones, takes it inside the 35 to the 33. 2.06 to go, first quarter, 10-0, A&M. Then ball, personal foul, defense, first down. Jim, if Todd Dodge, what, last week had five interceptions. Last again, week he had three interceptions. three interceptions, five against Houston. Five against Houston. All right. He needs the confidence throwing the ball. Last time when he hit William Harris, he couldn't have thrown the ball any better than he did. Duhon left, right to the right. Morshell is the tailback. There's a fake to Morshell. Top Dodge is going to be caught. Going to be caught for a loss. A good play there by number 87, Scott Pope, who has his fifth sack. Backup oh. linebacker out of Dallas. Polk is a backup linebacker, and he is on the strong side, number 87. He does not take the fake. Here they come. The Morshell goes to the left. Todd Dodge comes out to the right. Now watch Polk. He's away from the blocker right there and makes the tackle. Pretty. Well, it'll be second down and 15 to go. Ball back at the 38. Again, the fake to Simmons. Now they're going to throw back to Simmons, and he caught the ball at last and gets a few yards. That shows rustiness there. Simmons did not look at all sure of himself at any time on the play. On the center going out for the ball. Dale Austin put him out of bounds. He ran into Dodge on a play a couple plays before, but watch Edwin Simmons, number, number 33. When he does run out to him, he is in the screen. All right, the ball pops out of his hands. He goes back and gets it. That's good. But he doesn't look like he's out there with confidence, even though this is, as you said, the first full week of practice he's had. Big third down play from the 36. That was a pickup of only two yards after all that. So it's third down and 13. Bill Boyd Bryant, they haven't got the ball to him tonight. He's a big play man. He's wide to the right. No one coverage also. Now, here comes Simmons trying to make something happen, and he's not going to make anything happen. Didn't turn it up the field at all there. Barely got back to the bottom of Jim, he's thinking about that leg. They really, they know it's, it's psychological because his legs are really not going to get any better. And they can't get any worse because they're operate on both of them. Edwin Simmons, six foot four, 225 pounds, used to be able to make all the great cuts, and now he has no confidence, really has no confidence in his legs, afraid to make that cut. He just wanted to get out of bounds. Well, this is going to be better than 50 yards for Jeff Ward, who is 0 for 2 from that distance thus far this year. Big play, a better than 30 yards to William Harris, 15 yards tacked on top of it, and Texas winds up fourth and 12, a 52-yard attempt. So their offense is not doing well, and is that going to be far enough? It is getting close to there, but it is off to one side. And so after the big play, and after the penalty, the Longhorns do not score. 106 to go, and it is still 10 to nothing in the first quarter. The Aggies lead. Remember, after tonight's game, ESPN will have the Chevrolet College Football Report. So that scores and the highlights of all of today's college football games. Georgia Tech beating Georgia. Auburn, Alabama, what a story. Auburn goes to the Liberty Bowl. LSU goes to the Sugar Bowl. That's the Chevrolet College Football Report right after this game. 
six. He said. In the first quarter. Ball at the 35-yard line. Young Craig Stump has done a good job. Kevin Murray comes back next year. Now here's Sanders again. Sanders gets five good yards, and he's running tough and short, and a good cut. He's the young man that doctors said after they did surgery on his herniated disc, you should not play again. Isn't it amazing, Jim, when you watch a team who comes in here and almost a two-touchdown underdog, and all of a sudden they get on the board first with 10 points. How much spirit they have, and you know, whether it's momentum or whatever you want to call it. But they're fired up. They know they can score now on, on, on Texas. Didn't realize they could score that, that fast. They're moving. It's apples and oranges, but we'll remind you again, they had a 13-point lead last year. Sanders carrying the ball again. It'll be third down and a few yards to go. As Stephen Braggs makes the stop, number six, along with Ty Allen. Texas didn't get going last year until late in the first half. She said that's apples and oranges. You have no idea what's going to happen tonight. But a lot of surprises already today in the so-called traditional state rivalry. We have run out of time in the first quarter. And the first quarter belongs to Texas A&M. 10-0 over Texas. Looks like you're into winning. You bet. Then today, Chevrolet has a car for you. Cavalier. Come on in. Two liters of electronically fuel-injected power, front drive agility, and optional sports suspension. Cavalier, grab one. If this is today's Chevrolet, it's a winner. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Sights and sounds of every moment with color that's beautifully accurate, unmistakably Kodak. For the way we when the moment means more, trust it to Kodak Videotape. The Emmy winners, Scotch Video Cassettes, for having pioneered and perfected videotape. Watching your favorites day after day. from Scotch, our cobalt encapsulated oxide for world-class clarity. The world watches, world watches Scotch. Buy Scotch video cassettes and save $100 on a round-trip airline ticket. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. This flight doesn't get scrubbed for bad weather. A high-performance fighter has the technology to handle it. So does this, the all-weather Delco Freedom Battery. With the power to start you in the cold and the technology to beat the heat. And you never add a drop of water. Never wait for trouble. Get the all-weather Delco Freedom Battery. From $39.95 for a Series 40, call 800 AC Delco. As of this moment, this moment, things look dark for Texas. They're losing 10-0 in the Houston-Rice game. Houston is on the 12 of Rice looking to score. If they win, they go to the Cotton Bowl. Third down and three yards to go for the Aggies. And Stump is going to throw on third and three. He gets it away, and there's a stop pattern by Teal. And under pressure, Stump simply put on downfield. Jim Teal was wide open. Teal broke to the inside, and Stump threw it to the outside. Griffin, number 16, was on Teal. He took the fake, and Teal was sitting all by himself. When, when I look at it, when a quarterback throws the ball way to the outside like that, it must mean, it must mean that, that Jimmy Teal, number 23, ran the wrong way. Todd Shawson for his first punt. Gets it all the way to Rob Morshell, and Morshell would have a chance to, nope, he's put his hand up. I thought he might even have a chance to catch that ball. It's still rolling, and still rolling, and will be well inside the 15 down to the 11-yard line. What looked like a very short four kick. Morshell did not get to it, rolled past him. 14.42 to go, and it's 10-0 Texas a &M. You can't have it all. Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll? Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll? Make a low light. Oh, yes, you can. Make a low light. Oh, yes, you can. Make a low light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Make a low light. Oh, 
Take one of these things up, you've got a crew to help. That's why I'm Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. When it comes to my car and truck, I do the work myself. In 40 years, AC spark plugs have never let me down. And with today's technology, AC fire ring spark plugs are engineered to give you up to 30,000 miles reliable performance. Never wait for trouble. Go with AC fire ring spark plugs. Call 800 AC Delco for a retailer near you. Tonight's game brought to you by Chevrolet, who would like you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. Well, thus far, everything has gone wrong for the Longhorns, and the Aggies are looking good. Ball at the 11-yard line, and Paul and I asked each other a question while we were away. What about the up back? On that punt, why did he take the short kick? Morshell could not get to it, and then it rolled past him to the 11-yard line. Or and Simmons remain the back. Dodge is the quarterback. Edwin Simmons stumbles and gets maybe a yard. Bullet and Holland, 16 and 11. The linebacker is on that side. You know, Ken Ford, who may be, well, he's the second leading tackler, came out of high school weighing 155. Now he weighs 204. All right, here's Holland, Johnny Holland, the leading tackler. He's got a lot of 143 going into this game. Watch, Holland. Get out of my way. If you're not going to make the tackle, let me make it. Oh, it is second down and eight. From the 13. They give us Simmons again, and he's going straight ahead out to about the 15-yard line, and it's going to be third down and seven. Holland and Sadler in on the stop. Holland, number 11, the leading tackler in the Southwest Conference with 143 starting tonight. When you watch Edwin Simmons run and... You know, two knee injuries, things happen to him, and he's coming off the field now. But when we watch him run, Jim, what's got to happen to him? Because I had both of my knees operated on. And there's that thing in the back of your mind that says, you know, can it take the blow? He needs one good hit, get up from it, and say, hey, you know, it really didn't hurt that bad. I can go. Third down. Dodge. In trouble, and there he goes. And Texas is going to have to kick the ball away again. Ray Childers, number 53. Todd Dodd gets up. The Texas offense has gone nowhere tonight against AM. Yeah, I really don't like rollout passes. And I'm going to tell you why. When you start rolling out, you're rolling, you're cutting the field into a third. That's number one. And if that one man that's out in that area that you're going to throw to isn't open, you have no place else to go but run with the football. John Telchik to kick the ball away to Jimmy Hawkins. Kelchick, this ball will hit in front of Hawkins and gets another Aggie bounce and is down as they came down at the 49-yard line, make it the 48 of Texas. So the Aggies start out in Texas territory. We're early in the second quarter. Today, Chevrolet S10 Blazer. For the fun, for the choice, for the town, for the great outdoors, it's all there for you. Weekends work. Here's Tate's one-yard run as he bulls over the left side. Raymond Tate scoring on a one-yard run midway through the first period of football activity. Tate's one-yard run climaxed a 42-yard drive in seven plays. Took him two and a half minutes to do it. There you have it. Seven Leading right. Look as though they're playing with any intensity thus far. And the Yankees look as though they've got plenty of intensity. Ball at the 49 of Texas. First down the Aggies. The up man is Vic, and he gets a yard or two. And I keep looking, and we do know that Tony the Great is an outstanding defensive tackle. We also know that they moved Darwin to guard over Doss Dawson because of the Great. But we have called the Great's name maybe once tonight. Now, this is the same man who had 16 tackles last week, 15 individually against Baylor. You're going to call his name on this play. Okay. Let's call Tony the Great's name. He is an All-American. <laughs> Second down, nine. Dump, throws, and the ball is up for grabs and falls to the ground. Intended out there for number 84, Rich Seiler, a tight end, and Jerry Gray is the man who broke it up. And it'll be third down. And I did not call it in. I did, Seiler. 
<laughs> Tony the Great. All right, here's Jerry Gray, the All-American safety. Watch, watch him make the play on the ball. Knocks the ball out of Siler's hands and almost gets a shot at There's two helmets. Oh. You <laughs> watch him talk off both the helmets? Oh, yeah. Third down, I tell you. You know, Doug the Magic Flutie, yeah. who won the Heisman Trophy, and Tony the Great. Tony the Great. What great name for great players. Third and long. It is 10 to nothing. The Aggies, second quarter. Dump that time and throws out for Teal. Teal's got the first down. He's got speed. Griffin is chasing him. Teal's down the sidelines and is out of bounds at the 10. First down and goal to go. Jimmy Teal has got speed. Number 23. Now here's Jerry Gray, the All-American, number two. He's trying to catch Teal, but he's going to get bumped off right there. Gets a block from one of his friends. There goes Teal down the sideline. Jerry Gray is still chasing. No chance to get him. And number 16, Griffin, runs Teal out of bounds. Here come the Aggies again. Up 10 to nothing. Talk about the Magic Flutie winning in the Heisman. Texas better reach down for some magic here soon or they'll be able to be too far down. There goes the up man Tony, and Tony gets inside the 10. 38-yard pickup on the play. Stump is now 5 of 10. Now, last year, when Texas was down by the score of 13 to nothing, they had a quarterback by the name of Rich McIver they could put in, and he just filled the air with passes and threw a bunch of touchdown passes and brought them back. He is gone. Second down at the 7-yard line. And, of course, these are the moments of the Aggies and their famous 12th man standing all through the game, the student body. Tony is the up back. Sanders the tailback. Stump throws, and there's a diving catch in the end zone by Nelson. Touchdown. Beating Tony Tillman. But that's not much because that was a great catch. Oh, 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 oh. What a beautiful throw and catch. Because Nelson had Tillman beat to the inside. There's just no chance at all for Tillman, even though he was on Nelson. But Stump laid that ball outside, and it was, as you said, a great catch. Here comes the quarterback. Stump going back, setting up in the pocket again. He's looking at his primary target, which is Nelson. His delivery, the follow-through, is there. No one's going to get a chance at it. Franklin adds the extra point. 11.07 to go, and Houston has scored over Rice, and Texas trails the Aggies by 17. I hate to wait. He hates to wait. Well, you have to wait. So sorry. Avis knows how frustrating it is to wait for your rental car. That's why we invented the wizard number, so you can go right from your plane to the Avis bus. I hate to wait. We'll get you on your way and into your car fast. We know you hate to wait. So from reservation to return. I hate to wait. He hates to wait. We're trying harder, faster. I hate to wait. Order call, Hong Kong. Let's go the anchor. Liberty call now, Liberty call. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. For college football, here's former pro coach Bill Arnsbarger of LSU. There's a, a certain amount of rivalry and excitement in college football that, uh, that's uh, very important to the game and very important to the fans and to the alumni and to the players. Uh, I think that the college game is a very exciting game. I think the, the option makes it a very exciting game. Plus, uh, always a wide side of the field and a short side of the field in college football. And, uh, and then the fans are just uh, outstanding. College football, the All-American game. Tomorrow, the greatest foursome in golf, Nicholas, Palmer, Player, and Watson, shoot for a quarter-million-dollar jackpot at last Sunday's Skins game. The excitement tees off tomorrow. That is a correct score, and remember, Houston has scored against Rice. Texas, by losing tonight, or Houston winning tonight, will go on to the Freedom Bowl. And SMU would wind up in the Aloha Bowl. And that's the way things look now, but... 
We have spent nearly an hour with this football game, and there are still 11 minutes and 7 seconds to go in the first half. So there's a lot of time to be played and a lot of points to be scored. Alan Smith again to kick off. A&M, remember, will get the ball back to start the second half. A&M has 173 total yards. Texas has 66. And here's Smith to kick off to Nelson and Jones. Very short this time. And for the first time, Tillman has the ball. He's got some speed, too. Gets back to only got the ball about the 15 and only got it back up to about the 27 because there's plenty of time for the Yankees to get down under the kick. All right, let's watch Stump now. He's going to go back and set up. And he is throwing the whole way to Nelson. Here comes the pass into the end zone. Tillman has no chance on Nelson. The ball is put in the right spot. Allard, number 48, you'll see him, in, I think, in this picture. He'll jump up and try to get a piece of it. He doesn't. But look where the ball's thrown to Nelson. Outside, reaches, catches with both hands, touchdown, and the reaction. Okay, we've got a big change. Ronnie Robinson is your fullback, and Terry Orr becomes the other running back. Simmons is out. Here's Tom Dodge back to throw. In trouble, and down he goes. Sadler's the man down at the bottom, and the other one is Scott Polk again. 87. That time, Todd Dodge should have stayed right there in the pocket. There was no reason for him to run. He's getting shaky. He went back, set up, and then just started to run right away. Unless, And I know that wasn't a quarterback draw because he wouldn't have gone back that far. How many times have we had tonight for Texas a down? second, third, or fourth, with more than 10 yards to go. This time it is second and 16. Going the wrong way. Longhorns playing at home, and the Aggies have not won on the road all year long. Here's Dodge back. Goes over. Now he's got his man, and that is William Harris. A good tight end. His second big catch of the night, but he's still shy of the first down at the 34. It is third down and three. Those numbers will change because he's caught two, but the average won't change because he's averaging 18.8 yards per catch. Big target. 6'5", 235 pounds, throttle. Delbor Bryant out wide to the right. New Hahn to the left. Neither of the wide receivers have been thrown to the right. Dodge has to get him back. Across the middle, there's Harris again. And Harris is down with a first down at the 49-yard line. Taken down by Bryant, number six. See, they listen sometimes. When you're that big, you throw to the man. <laughs> and this is not an easy catch either for William Harris. Watch this. Two guys on him. That's pass interference by Ashbury, number 16, because he had his arm wrapped around William Harris, number 95, before the ball got there. Remember, he is 6'5", 234, has great hands, and is a sophomore. Dodge is three of four thus far. He hands off and nowhere goes Ronnie Robinson. Battling a foot problem all year long. And it is going to be second down at about nine from near midfield. 9.07 and counting in the first half, and it's 17 to nothing. The Aggies over Fred Akers and Texas. Not a happy man. Can't be. Tied Oklahoma. Then just sailing along without a loss till they hit Houston. Then they beat TCU when TCU was hot. Then they lost to Baylor. Here's Todd Dodge on second and long. And he's going to run out of again. He loves to run. And he picks up four or five yards before being caught from behind by Samuel Bryant. But it is going to be third down and five. Maybe even six. All right, we'll see if it breaks down. you got Chester, Chilton, Blackmar, Wright, and Stewart. Now, here comes Todd Dodge back. Does this break down? Look on the outside. He has time, but he's looking at the primary target the whole time, Jim. And when that happens, they're going to get to know Bryant is the man that gets here. The thing that's confusing me just a little bit is the outside receivers, Bill Boy, Bryant, Buck, and, and Brett Duhon, are they're playing one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Third down and six to go. Look out, boy, he takes a hit. He really took a hit. Terry Orr was the intended receiver, and Dodge, who had a bruised thigh, uh, checked out a knee last week against Baylor, limps off again. Terry Orr took a shot right after he missed the ball by Bryant, but here comes Todd Dodge. Now, the blitz is on. He sees the blitz. He's going to try to dump it over the middle, and he gets a shot right after that. That's number 19, Ken Ford. Linebacker. Here they come, Ford and Holland. Both linebackers are coming. Here comes Ford. 
The man who missed the block, Robinson, the fullback, number 49. Belchick to kick the ball away. Hawkins calling for a fair catch, but he'll let that go, hoping it gets in the end zone, and they tip it before it does. And so with 7.51 to go, deep in their own territory, A&M has the ball and leading 17 to nothing. And Texas still hasn't put together any offense. You know, I couldn't have asked for a better deal on my 1985 Texas Lariat than the deal I got at Mort Hall Ford. The Lariat comes complete with free air conditioning and a luxurious plush interior. And Ford's rugged suspension takes me from city streets to country roads. Mort Hall gave me a choice. I can leave for just $1.99 a month or drive it away for only $99.95. And don't forget, that's with free air conditioning. The 1985 Texas Lariat. Drive it at Mort Hall Ford. Then drive it anywhere you want. Hi, I'm Harold. I dress 70, talk 80, and shoot 90 if my putter's hot. Hi, I'm Larry. I wear 30. I rush 100 when the oilers are hot. Whatever your game is, at Harold's we've got sharp clothes for Christmas, including ladies and western wear. Come visit Harold's in the Heights this holiday season. We'll be looking for you. Or else. Or else what? Or else you're in big trouble. This is our last regular season game, of course, here on ESPN and for the colleges and universities around the country. It has been a great series. Paul and I and all of the crew have enjoyed it. We'd like to thank the executive director of the CFA, Chuck Ninas, director of communications, Dick Snyder, all of the coaches, all of the sports information directors, and all of the athletic directors for their assistance, help, generosity, and friendship throughout the year. Ditto. First down. Ball is handed back to Sanders, and Sanders gets out to about the 14-yard line, and that's a pickup of five before Tony the Great put him down. It is second down and five and counting. 17 to nothing, and who would have thought it here at Memorial Stadium in Austin? I wouldn't have thought it. Take a look at Darwin now. Remember, Matt Darwin is the center. He's blocking. He moved him to guard to block on Tony the Great. Look what he does. He gets to the Great's legs. Tony makes the tackle, but there was already a pickup of almost five yards. Second down, five to go. They're going to give it to Sanders again. And it breaks down the bottom again, along with Hepcock. That'll be third down and short. Not only must Texas stop the Aggies, but they've got to figure out how to put together some offense of their own. They've given up 17 points and scored none. Here's where they've got to really be careful because Texas A&M with the pass play, they're, they're, they're hitting the big pass play on it for total for, for yardage. Thomas Sanders has gone out limping a little bit. Rod Bernstein, a sophomore number 29, becomes a tailback on third down and three. That's Bernstein with the ball. And Bernstein has got the first down across the 20-yard line. Jerry Gray drives him back with a little help. But it is still a first down. Bernstein carrying the ball for the first time tonight. Bernstein carrying the ball, breaks a tackle. As soon as he does that, he automatically has the first down. What? Running to his left. Here's the tackle he breaks. And that's Bronner, number 85, that misses the tackle. Too late, boy. You may all get together now, but it's after the fact. And there's a penalty for unnecessary roughness as for unsportsmanlike conduct against Texas, and that'll be 15 big ones against the Longhorns. A&M had one of those. Now Texas has one. Houston now leading 14 0. First goal foul. Defense. First down. Check that uh, correction on the score from Houston. The Cougars are leading Rice 13 0 and apparently are on their way to the Cotton Bowl. That's not going to make this Texas team feel any better at halftime either. Is it? Can you imagine Jackie Sherrill should he win tonight? First winning season ever at Texas A&M and beat Texas at Texas. Well, it's the seventh time in history of Memorial Stadium. Dump puts the ball away, and it is caught or not. Nope, Mark Lewis couldn't hold on to it. Big hit there by Stephen Bragg, the strong safety. And it is second down and ten. You're right, Braggs was all over Lewis, and it was, but look at the pass protection. First of all, there is a blitz on. Ty Allard, number 48, the linebacker's coming. They're not getting any penetration. Stump has it. Look at Braggs. Right there, gets the arm in, knocks the ball away. Twice does he knock the ball away. But don't you think Mark Lewis didn't say something saying his right arm had me before the ball. He thought he was interfered with. Stump is 7 of 12 for 103 yards and one touchdown. Anthony 
Tony the fullback, and a good play there by Jerry Gray. We've called his name a number of times tonight. It'll be third down and long, about eight to go. Jerry Gray plays a little different than most. We got, what do we have here? We got a penalty at the line of scrimmage. That looks like holding. But Jerry Gray, we'll take a look at it. He's not going to say anything yet, is he? Just holding. That's right. Jerry Gray is, is, is a different kind of free safety. He'll get up in the line of scrimmage. He'll get a yard off the ball. As soon as he reads, and he reads so very well, as soon as he reads run, he's in on the play. If he sees the lineman set up the pass, he's gone. Take the ball back inside the 30-yard line, put it down at the 26-yard line, but give another down to the Aggies. Holding. Holding. Offense. Repeat. Second down. It is second down and just about 20 yards to go. From the 26-yard line, 5.55 left in this surprising first half on a beautiful night in Austin. Unless you're a Texas fan at the moment, then you're not noticing the weather. Here's Stump. Stump gets, oh, look, all by himself. Is Teal across the way, and Hagee puts him out of bounds, and that's almost a first down. If it's not, it'll be third down and very short. Jim, the cornerback is supposed to get some help from the linebacker, who is June James, number 62. Now, I look to the left of your screen. June James goes to the inside where he should have moved to the outside. There is just no help back there for Heggie, number 17. Uh, close to a first down. That's Teal. You can't give him that much room. Third down, a little bit more than a yard. Third down. Two tight yeah. ends? Yeah. Yep. Tyler comes in. Lewis is in. Three back. And they give it to Tony. And Tony's got the first down. I tell you, down in the Bryan College Station area and wherever Aggie fans are around this country, they're thrilled with what's going on here. They waited for Jackie Sherrill's teams to do something. They have been breaking even, but if they win this one, it's a big plus and surge ahead. 42 Valentine, the lead blocker. Take a look at it. He just goes up in. He's got his, his man that they knock flat back, and then Tony picks up the first down. Ball is at the 48-yard line of the Aggie. They pitch back, Bernstein. And that's a good play there. And let's see who made that. Ty Allard, I believe, 48, will get off the bottom. Along with James McKinney. And apparently, Thomas Sanders, when he limped out, is going to stay out for a little while because Bernstein remains in a tailback. 48, and The last time I did a game here, you were not here. I looked at their middle linebacker of Texas, Tony Edwards. He is 6'2", 260 pounds. Very rarely called his name. And we haven't called it yet tonight. Well, he is a leading tackler on the team. Second down, 11 to go. And Stump, he's been having a good night. And now he's got Nelson out there. Nelson looking for the ball and a good defensive play there by James Lott, number nine. Two men on Nelson, and the ball almost got to him. Lott and Braggs are on Nelson, but Lott is the man that makes the play. There's Lott, number nine, trailing. He knows he's got help by Braggs deep, but Braggs is getting beaten. Watch this. The oh, last second, throw your hand up, knock the ball away. Good play. Looked back, saw the ball, got the hand up there. In comes Tony Griffin, number 16, into the backfield, and they take out Tony Edwards, the middle linebacker, on third down 11. Four and a half minutes to go in this first half. by 17. Here's Stump on the down and out, has a man. Bound is Teal, and that's enough for the first down. Griffin was the man on him. But Teal made the right move, went down far enough to pick up the first down, picks up 14, he needed 11. Teal does. Let's look at the secondary drop now. They're playing man-to-man -man on the corners, and they're doubling up on the inside. Okay, Griffin, he's the man that has to get Teal one-on-one. Didn't do it. Teal gets to the outside, first down, and throwing a little short route. No, Jackie Sherrill recruited 30 men this year, and only four are using their freshman eligibility this year. He's got a bundle in the background waiting for next year. And now the ball is given off to Vic, the up man, the fullback, and he gets a yard or so before Hethcock and McKinney make the stop. Hethcock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, out of Garland, Texas, playing his final game here. Tony the Great playing his final game here. A lot of them like that. Tony Edwards, Jerry Gray. 
But the biggest thing is tonight, this ball game has been all the Aggies. Just moments of brilliance of big plays by Texas, none of which have paid off. Look out here to Teal. You got Teal one on one. Second down, right down long. Look at this. Look at this. That is Vic. And that is his longest run of the year. Before tonight, it was just 12 yards. And he picks up there a bundle. Flag is down. He bettered his best run by nine yards on that one. Texas is clapping it up here. And the Yankees are walking backwards. What a great opening. That quick pop to the fullback, Vic. And the only man between Vic and the goal line was Jerry Gray, number two, who made the tackle. I believe it's going to be a dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, so they'll move the sticks for the first down, and then they will mark off the yardage. 3.43 to go. Wendell Shelton, the referee. Hey, he's got an escort back there. Takes the ball back to the 33-yard line. First down. You mean to tell me that somebody said something, or was that Jackie Sherrill on the sideline? He's mad about something. I'm, the flag was going out in the middle of all the players. Something must have been said when you have a non-contact foul. Well, Vic and Gray were talking to each other, and I don't know what it might have been. Roger Vic, number 43, the fullback, who made the run, like in tennis, verbal abuse. Yeah. Stump fires, and nobody's going to get it. There's intended for Lewis, who thinks he was held up by Allard, but there's no flag. Check that. Allard was on the blitz. I'm sorry. Allard was on the blitz, and no one picked him up. Top side of the screen. Take a look at it. You're going to see it on the right, and you're going to see Allard come in just as Stump throws. It hits him right in the chest, drives him back. Whoa. -oh. Second down and 25 from a 33. 3.27 to go in this half, and 17 nothing. A&M, the Aggies. Five defensive backs again. And here's the quarterback ball. Stump. A little trouble there. Does not get it by oh, about 20 yards. And it'll be third down and long. Hagee finally made the stop along with James. Jim, when they go to five defensive backs, there's, they take out the middle linebacker, and there's no one there to fill that hole. Stump just had the quarterback draw. It took one step back, went through the hole. He was running for about five or six yards before he ran into anybody in order. Shea Walker comes in as a third wide receiver, number 85. As we said, he and Craig Stump went to the same Jefferson High School in Port Arthur, Texas, as did Todd Dodge and Brent Duhon of Texas. Third down and 19 to go. Ball number 27. And here's Stump. Over the middle, has his man. Oh, got the ball and picked it back up. <laughs> Teal has made a bundle of catches tonight. Am I missing something? The guy drops the ball in, he has time to pick it up. There's still no one around him. That's what happened. 14-yard pickup, and that'll bring Franklin onto the field for a field goal attempt. This stadium was dedicated 60 years ago in the month of November with a game between these same two teams. And since it was dedicated 60 years ago, in this stadium, the Yankees have won only six times in those 60 years. This will be a 31-yard attempt for Franklin. From 31 yards out, the kick is up, and it is good. And it is 20 to Texas losing to Texas A&M. Who would have thought this? But it's happening started in 1933 with our first electric. Therefore, well, it seems like the 31st time are Tillman and Nelson. And once we get the kickoff and the kickoff return, we will have a check-in with George Grant about what's happening down between Houston and Rice, and things have turned around just a little bit. And remember, what could happen if Houston should lose and Texas should lose, SMU would go to the Cotton Bowl, not to the Aloha Bowl. 
Well, we'll hear Smith to kick off. And this will be Tillman at the five. And down at the 21-yard line. And now for a report on Houston and Rice. Let us go back to College Football Report in our studios and George Graham. Thank you, Jim. It's not over yet at the Houston Astrodome by any means because after Houston had taken a 13-0 lead after a touchdown run by Raymond Tate, another by Matt Pearson, look what happens here. Mark Scott from one yard out dives over the line of scrimmage to cap a nine-play, 85-yard drive. The extra point is good. Houston now leading Rice, but only by a score of 13-7. Late second period. Thank you, George. You're back in time to see Duhon catch his first pass of the night as thrown by Dodge, and it's first down Texas at the 36. Finally, there, there's one-on-one -on -one coverage by Texas A&M on the outside. Austin, number one, James Flowers, number 15, the two defensive backs. They're covering Duhon and Bill Boy Bryant, one-on-one, -on -one, throw the ball to him. Look at that yardage. That's awesome. Look at that score. That's awesome. Nearly 80,000 people here tonight. Most of them cheering for the Longhorn. Dodge looking around and overthrows his man at the sideline. It is second down 10 at the 35. This is only the first time in history, believe it or not, that Memorial Stadium has been sold out for every single home game. Despite all the great years that Texas has had and is having, this is the first time they've sold out every home game of Memorial Stadium. Even though Todd Dodge, five out of seven, what he must do is when he goes back, sit down, relax a little bit. He's running around. He wants to run too quick. He run, fires the ball, and there's Joe Boy Clark. His first catch of the night. So on this drive, Dodge has finally found his wide receivers. And now with one to go, they're moving the sticks. They're going in a hurry-up offense, trying to get on the board. Last year, they went in after trailing 13-0, 14-13 at the half with a couple of quick touchdowns. They won't do that this time, but they're trying to get something going from the 47 of the Aggies. Dodd throwing on every play, and not... He threw too quickly then. Duhon hadn't even made his cut. The ball was there. That's it. Both quarterbacks will watch him dodge and stop both. They're making up their minds before the play as to who they're going to throw the ball to. That time, he went to throw to the outside to Brent Duhon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to interrupt you. In Houston, Rice has scored again. It is all tied up between Rice and Houston. I like it. Can you believe that? Go ahead. But, well, all right, I'll get back to it in a second. Here we go. Just had to tell you that. And now, way downfield for Bill Boy Bryant, who had double coverage, and it's overthrown. But I was going to say on the last play that he had Bill Boy Bryant on the outside one-on-one -on -one with James Flowers. Now, this time, Texas A&M went with double coverage. Corner safety, corner safety on the two wide men. When they do that, he must read the defense because the man now that's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage will be William Harris, 95, the tight end. But we're in a third-down situation. I can't believe what I saw today in Auburn and Alabama and what I'm seeing tonight, Texas, Texas A&M, and hearing about Houston and Rice. Houston up 13 on the way to the Cotton Bowl. Rice's title. Third down and long, Todd Dodge fires for Duhon over his head, and he took a hit there by Austin after the ball sailed over his head. 1.41 to go, and they will go on fourth down. Well, <laughs> when you're the man, the intended receiver, you're going to get hammered. Here comes Dodge, and he's looking at Brent Duhon coming across the middle. Watch what Austin does after Duhon misses the ball. Here comes Duhon. Across, Austin's on him, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Coming I... underneath, Jim, here it is. The ball is high. Austin hits him. I'm going to punt. Rice now leads Houston by a point. And here's Telchik. They're not going to go. He's going to kick the ball away. Hawkins back there and takes a fair catch at the 13-yard line. Texas could have gotten into the Cotton Bowl by beating Baylor last week and did not. Now they could get in tonight if Rice does beat Houston by beating Texas A&M, but find themselves down late in the first half, 20 to nothing. Can you believe it? Jim, I think Texas has two timeouts. Three, or three timeouts, excuse me. Go ahead, do this. And I'll well, I'm just going to say, everybody knows that the Magic Foodie, Doug Foodie, won the Heisman Trophy, and Sunday night at 8 o'clock, we'll have a special on the little big man. Most of in the colleges. Now, even though you're down 20 points, a minute 34 to play and a half, you have three timeouts. Here's a good place to use your timeouts. Take them one, two, three, if you stop them. First down, 
They give the ball to Anthony Tony, who gets across the 15-yard line, and I think, well, time has been called, and they are going to do exactly what you thought. Well, there's one. Now, you take, take them on all the plays. What difference does it make? Because unless they make a big play, you're not gonna, they're not going to be in position to do anything other than punt the ball. Fred Akers has heard enough. He hasn't seen enough. He has taken off his headset and simply said, that's it for this half. Franklin kicked a 37-yard field goal midway through the first quarter, and the Aggies got their first scores. And then there was a drive, and Tony took it in from two yards out to make it 10 nothing still in the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, Stump found Nelson. Great catch by Jeff Nelson to make it 17 nothing. And just moments ago, Franklin added the 31-yard field goal, and it is 20 to nothing. There's a great deal of conversation before this game, at least among the ESPN crew. Would Texas have the same intensity since they knew that the Cotton Bowl was just a slim possibility after their loss to Baylor? And most of the answers were, of course they would, not only because of the bowl, but because they want to beat Texas A&M. But Texas tonight, and I'm taking nothing away from the Aggies and how they're playing, but Texas tonight does not look as though they're playing with great intensity. Well, as the in-house announcer, somebody here, I'd make the announcement now and let Texas know that Houston's losing. Second down and six. No one in this stadium knows it. When they wait till a half, Tony carries the football, gets across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Ty Allard makes the stop there, number 48, along with Stephen Braggs, number six. Number 25, Now, that would set this stadium alive and maybe wake up Texas. So what's at stake here? With Rice leading Houston 14-13. Remember, we'll have reports, visual and audio, throughout the game that started after our game began. And we are taking a long time for this first half. Beautiful half of the Aggies is excruciating for the long run. Third down and short. And they give it to Tony again, and he's got the first down. And that'll run the clock out now. They have simply just been able to... Hold off that good Texas line of McKinney and Brawner and Hethcock and Tony DeGray. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll go back to ESPN Sports Center for a complete update on all the scores and highlights of the day. That Auburn, Alabama game, and of course, Houston and Rice. And Texas A&M, do not forget this, we will get the ball in the second half. Yeah, things don't look good at this moment. <laughs> Look for a big turnaround on the second half by the Longhorn offense. That man, Tony Bland, took the hit there at the line of scrimmage by Tony Edwards, the middle linebacker. And now they may just let it run down. They are. They're yeah, they're, the Aggies are already on their way to the dressing room. Five seconds to go. Well, remember also... If you're a Texas fan, the Aggies have outscored their opponents in the first half, only to be outscored in the second half. But let's be realistic about it. As you take a look at the faces of the Longhorns of Texas, they realize they're in a ball game and they're not doing too well. Aggies 20, Texas nothing. Sports Center with a complete report in a moment. As far as the voting goes, uh, Keith Byers finished second. Tell you this, the Aggies, 43 times they've moved the ball, 
Texas, only 28 times, 28 plays that they run. You cannot win football games running 56 plays. Nelson is the deep man, and Jeff Ward, for the first time tonight, will kick off. Aggie power. This is the way the team, this is the team's view as they came out to start the second half. The announcement has just been made to the crowd here at last and at halftime. Rice is beating Houston 14-13. The Cotton Bowl is up for grabs between Houston, Rice, I should say Houston, Texas, and SMU. Nelson, the deep man, and Ward to do the kicking off. Nelson, whoops, does not get out of the end zone with it. Keeps it there. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Now the Yankees in the possessions, they look good. Field goal first time, touchdown to second. They've only had to punt one time, added another touchdown to field goal, and they got a 20 0 lead. Now look at these possessions. Texas. Punt, punt, miss field goal, punt, punt, punt. They just didn't do anything. And again, they only had the ball 28 times, and when you do that, you don't win football games. Well, they know that Rice, at the moment at least, is in front of Houston. They know they've got a chance for the Cotton Bowl, Texas. Maybe that will wake them up, but the Yankees have been dominant. If Houston loses and Texas loses, does that mean that SMU has to give all that suntan lotion back? <laughs> they don't get the, the trip to Hawaii if that happens. Vic, the up back stump, can't hear. Or at least he's afraid his teammates cannot hear. Doing a smart thing. Don't get off on the right, on the wrong foot. Just stay, stay cool, stay calm. We've got a 20-point lead. Thomas Sanders is one running back. Roger Vick is the other. Stump, of course, is the quarterback. Jimmy Teal, 23. Jeff Nelson, who was split wide to the right before he went back in the huddle, is number eight. Mark Lewis is the tight end. Reeves, Williams, Stetman, Darwin, and Wilson. The offensive line. Breaks a tackle. Sanders is brought down by Gray, but he picked up five, maybe six yards. Second down and four. I'd like to know how many tackles that Jerry Gray has ever missed, but watch him. He's up in the line of scrimmage, right behind the linebacker, and watch Jerry Gray come out here on Sanders. He knows he's got his man, gets right there, makes the tackle, sure handed. Good at it. Second down from the 26 yard line. Call Tony the Great's name for one of the few times tonight. The All-American hasn't been in on much. McKinney and Hepcock and Braun are the other men on the front four. Allard, Edwards, and James, the linebackers. Griffin and Tillman, the corners. Braggs and Gray, the safety. Now we see Lotta's back in at left corner. Griffin is up. All right. Vic is the man getting the ball. The man hits him. Bang. Tony the Great. That, there was a missed block right there by Matt Darwin. I want to get back to this Darwin. That switch with, with Texas a and did before this game. It's worked. It's nearly every play. Third down and three to go. Well, they just did get that play. Or did, did they? they get it off? I don't think they did. Before that time ran out on it. Jim, what I was going to mention, you mentioned at the beginning, the big switch just before the game is Matt Darwin, number 78, is the starting, or was the starting center for Texas A&M. But because of the great Tony DeGrate, number 99, the left tackle, what they did is they moved Darwin, who is their best offensive lineman, best blocker. Then end of the game, offense, third down. Moved him out on Tony DeGrate, and he has done a great job. That's the man right there, Darwin, number 78. He is a senior. He's already been invited to the Hula Bowl, not the Aloha Bowl, the Hula Bowl. Ball to play for Paul Bear Bryant at Texas a and Third down and eight to go. Puts the ball away, and it is picked off by Gray. His seventh interception ties the season career high for Texas and gives the ball to the Longhorns inside the 30. Teal the intended receiver. Talk about a man long enough, he's going to do something. Jerry Gray does it all. His seventh interception this year. He's just a fantastic athlete. You know why he's an All-American. He doesn't miss tackles. We saw him in the first half break up a pass. Now there was a pass to Teal. Jerry Gray just made a jump on the ball, intercepted.
intercepted it. This is what Texas needs. Well, now they got to get their offense going. Their defense has held them and turned the ball over the first turnover of the game. Stop goes back, and he's looking at Teal all the way, Jim. The blitz is on. What's great? Right in front, takes it away. He's got help out there by June James, 62. And now they give the ball to Terry Orr. And Orr gets inside the 30-yard line. Orr and Robinson are your setbacks. Robinson hardly played in the first half. They had Orr at fullback with Simmons and Nelson and Morshell at tailback. But now, toward the end, they moved Orr to the fullback spot. And now Morshell is going back in. And they are taking out Robinson. So put Morshell as your tailback if they come out in the eye, which they're not doing. Because Morshell can catch the ball well. And... Or is your lone setback. Second down and long. Dodge on the stomach coming out of there. And he throws on the dead run and coming back for the ball is Duhon. And that's the first down at the 11 yard line. The best the Longhorns have done tonight. They trail by 20, but they're in scoring territory and they know that Rice is leading Houston. It is funny. This is the time that Dodge could have run because he had the outside, but he sees. Duhon coming back. And that's what Duhon did right. Watch, he'll go down, and then he comes back to the quarterback. He sees the quarterback running, gets himself, his body, in front of Austin, where Austin can't make the play. The ball's on target. Duhon makes the catch. First down. Bill Boy Bryant goes wide to the right. Orr and Robinson are now in there. And that's the up man, Robinson, trying to get some running room, and he's not going to get it. Not going to get it. Fine defensive play led by Childress. They strung him out across the way. By the way, if that Houston-Rice game where the Cotton Bowl at stake is in doubt, once this game is over because their game started after ours did, we will switch you there and you will see the end of that game. So stay with us. And of course, we'll bring you updates throughout the game. A loss of two, second down and 12. Throw the ball. Duhon to the right. Billboard line to the left. And they're running the ball and not going very far at all. That is Orr carrying the ball, and it is going to be third down and long. Again, we'll point out that the Aggies all year long have outscored their opponents in the first half, only to be outscored soundly by their opponents in the second half. That's not to say that will happen tonight. That's only to say what history of the 84 season has shown us. Third down and nine to go from the ten. Dodge coming this way. Gets the ball across the middle and a fine play in there intended for Harris. Looks like Lance Jackson got his hands in on the ball. And it's fourth down. Throwing to William Harris, 95, his big tight end coming across the middle. And Lance Jackson, number five, is staying right with him. Pushing off. Now he's got to the outside. Now look at the... Jack, that ball hits Harris in the hand. Jackson did not hit the ball. Well, apparently they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt by Ward. And between the 20 and 29 yard distance, he is perfect, two for two. And this will be 27 yards. And directly in front of the goal. They blocked and it, blocked it, it, and there it goes. No, that's Pope. Being chased down, Polk inside the 20, running out of steam, and down he goes at the six. First and goal to go. The Longhorns had a first down at the 11. They come away with nothing, but the Aggies have a first down at the six of Texas. Borchell's the man that ran him down, but the, the ball was blocked right into Polk's hands. Took too long to get it off, and it's going to come from the left of your screen. The top of your screen is Polk. He's just coming out. He's not even going in. And that's number five, Lance Jackson. The man that broke up the play. Is that who it is? That's it what it like is. It. No, that's Bryant. The Bryant six. Bryant six. Okay, Polk and Morshale. Morshale is the man that catches it. Here's where you start struggling. When your head starts to go back, you're getting a little tired. <laughs> then Morshale, diving tackle at the big ball just inside the seven. First down, Aggies leading 20 to nothing. Texas looked as though they had the spark set up by the interception. And now, straight ahead, goes Tony. Tell you what, 
when you have a couple of young men, one from each school, spotting for you, and it gets in a game like this where one is expecting to win, the other expecting to lose, they kind of go into the tank. They get a little excited. <laughs> that's what makes that's what makes college football. Ball is at the five-yard line. Second down and goal to go. 10.40 to go. Third quarter. The interception and then the turnover is the kick was blocked. Three backs remain on the backfield. That's Bernstein in motion. Stump. And there's Tony. He's a good runner. Turns the corner. And out he goes on the two to be third down and short. Gary and it looked like June, uh, James. June James got over there to get him. Gary Gray was also there. You'll see Tony trying to get out to the outside. Now he gets to what the ball about the three yard line inside the three. But watch, there's June James, number 62, and Jerry Gray, number two, in on the tackle. If they've got something, they need it here. The Aggies to salt this away. A 76 yard return by Scott Polk after the field goal attempt was blocked into his hands by Lance Jackson. and motion the other way. Coming this way. Stump sees he can get it, and he does oh. not. Right at the one. Right at the one. Looked like Tony Edwards is the man who hit him along with James McKinney. <laughs> I think he made the decision. Stump just a little bit too late because McKinney and Edwards, they're going to nail him at the goal line. Stump's up. That's where he's going to land with. Watch this hit. He thinks he's in. Wrong. Oh, talk about getting banked. And Ty Ellard is the other guy, 48. What's the man in the middle? It's Ty Ellard. Bang! He knocks him back. Oh, that hurts. That's headache time. Time is out. We'll come back to see what happened. Bronco 2 never made it. S10 Blazer 4x4 never made it. No four-wheeler made ever made it until the new Jeep Cherokee became the first to win all three 4x4 of the year awards in 1984. And only Cherokee has an optional intercooled turbo diesel engine, a choice of two or four doors, and room for five. Get triple award-winning Cherokee performance or the luxury of the new Wagoneer only in a Jeep. The human hand. It's not flat. It's curved. Now, finally, there's a glove built around it. Finally, from Wells Lamont, grips. The only all-purpose leather glove with a patented pre-curved design for a comfortable grip that just won't give. Grips from Wells Lamont. Look for Wells Lamont gloves at the sign of the mule. Nice game brought to you by the Jeep Corporation. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. Eric Franklin has been brought on to try to make this lead better than three touchdowns. And now he's going off, and I may only be going off just to get a word from the I can't imagine what it would be about, but here he comes back again. Well, when you pick up your tee, that's a tool for the trade. <laughs> he started off the field with his tee. It's very scientific now. Franklin puts it down, then he walks around. Well, time is still out, and they're down to seven seconds on the play clock, and I think they want to run it out. That's what they want to do to get a better angle to make this kick. They'll blow the whistle here. They ran the time off the clock. They'll move it back five yards. And now when you get down to the Auburn-Alabama game, for those of you who saw that, when Pat Dye went for the touchdown and set the field goal, the ball was in about that same position. And Dye, after the game, and he will be second-guessed, said that we had just as good a chance for a touchdown from there as we did a field goal because of the angle. Now, Texas has refused their running down the clock and making them take this angle. You're looking at me. No, I, I, I'm just repeating what happened today. It's not my idea. I had to kick that ball in a second. 17-yard field goal attempt by Franklin. He's kicked two. 17 yards out. No problem for him at that angle. And with 9.52 to go, the Aggies are in charge. 23 to nothing.
the only body you'll ever have. Make the most of it. And if you're serious about exercise, and you should be, why not the best? Nautilus for the Home. For full information about the new and revolutionary Nautilus for the Home, call toll-free 1-800-445-9000. That's 1-800-445-9000. Tomorrow, Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie is the star. Relive highlights from his record-setting collegiate career tomorrow on ESPN. Tomorrow, State of Austin, Texas, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire... Texas had a first down at the 11-yard line, came away with nothing. As a result of the 76-yard return of the block kick by Polk, Franklin adds three. It's 23 to nothing, a six-point turnaround. And there's the score, Rice and Houston. And remember, Houston has got to win to go to the Cotton Bowl. And if this game is anywhere near close, once this game is over, we will switch to Houston. In the meantime, we'll bring you updates with George Grant in the studios, plus the word they report to us here in Austin. But Texas knows that Houston is losing, knows they've got to win. Aggies are winless on the road this year. The winning instant, Smith kicks off, and that is Tillman at the 1. To the 10, the 20, and down he goes at about the 23-yard line. Now, it is obvious what must happen for the first time tonight. Texas has got to come up with some offense. Their best field position was given to them by Jerry Gray's seventh interception of the year, and they could not score. All right, and on first down, I'm going to repeat myself, but take a look at your outside re re receivers. Bill Boy Bryant, number 80, and Brent Duhon, number 7. On first down, Texas A&M seems to be covering him one-on-one. -on -one. Single coverage, man-to-man. -man. Now, if they go out and double those people, then you look at William Harris, but don't be afraid to throw the ball on first down. It is one of the better downs to throw on. Dodd Dodge, 7 of 13 for under 9 yards. But he has caught, been caught, and has run the ball a lot, but not much. Now he pumps and hands the ball around, and here comes Warshaw carrying the football, and he gets across the 25 to about the 27. A pickup of 5 yards, Collin and Ford. They call him Mr. Everywhere, Mr. Anywhere. Made the stop. Now, Fred Akers is going with his seniors in the backfield. Terry Orr and Rob Warshaw. Trying to get something going here. They found Harris for a couple of big gains in the first half. Haven't found him yet, but they have used Bill Boy Bryant and Brent Duhon here in the second half. The wide receivers. Second down, Dodge. Dodge looking, gets the ball out, and there's Harris, the big tight end. He is still on his feet, and down he goes. But it's the first down across the 45-yard line. Childress peeled back to make the stop. Along with number 27, Terrence Brooks. All right, look at the protection in the line now. Todd Dodge again. He's going to step up in, and he sees Harris downfield. But when Harris catches the ball, what's the move he makes afterwards? Number 11 is Johnny Holland, the linebacker. Here's the catch. What's the move? He's hit. A little dance back to the inside. Remember, this man's 6'5", 234 pounds. He can haul it. 8.49 to go. Third quarter, 23-0 Texas A&M. First down, Texas. Dodge in trouble. How many times has he gone down? And that's the first time that we really have taken notice of the Texas fans perhaps booing Todd Dodge for getting sacked again. Sacked three times in the first half. This is the first time in the second half. But when you look at Todd Dodge goes back, he's not even looking at his receivers right now. He's looking at the defensive line coming out. Watch him. He's stuck it right now. He has no position to throw the football. He's waiting to get hit. Or find a way out of it. Second down, a long loss, 16 to go. Wide right, Duhon left. Or the lone setback, Morshell is set in as a flanker left. Dodge. Puts the ball up. He's headed for Morshell, and he can't get to it. Defender back there was Ken Ford, and he had help deep. And it's third down and 16. We got a holding penalty against Texas. Ken oh Ford, when you mention his name, number 19, is a linebacker running with the back. More shell coming out of the backfield, man to man. And catch a pass from Johnny Holland, the other inside linebacker. I think I said, Paul, that when Ken Ford, he weighs 204 now. When he came out of high school, he's now a senior, he weighed 155. Childress over the official. Childress is 6'7, 280. <laughs> yes, sir, what do you want? Well. <laughs> Anything you say, Mr. Children? <laughs> Holding. 
offense. Penalty is declined. All right. Third down. It is still third down and 16. Childress married a Texas co-ed, but she did the right thing. She transferred to Texas A&M. Right thing as far as Childress and the Aggies are concerned. 7.57, third quarter. Still a lot of time. Longhorns need the big plays and need some points on the board. And now for the first time, we see Russell Hayes in and wide to the left as a wide receiver. Third and 16. Look out. He is in the middle, and he throws the ball out. It's going to be picked off. Picked off, I believe, by... Is that Bryant? That is. Domingo Bryant, who blocked the ball on the field goal attempt into the hands of Pope, comes up with his second interception of the year. And Dodge gets up limping again. Well, he ought to get up limping again after the hit he takes. And they just hammered Todd Dodge. He's not getting up. He's down on one knee. He got hammered right after he throws the ball. The rush is on. The defensive line doing a great job. And here is the throw. And that's Childress, the man we were talking about, number 53, that just drilled him. Dodge weighs 178. Watch this. Bryant. Trying to get the ball to William Harris. Ooh. There's Bryant. He runs into his own man, Austin. Here comes Dodge. 280 pounds landed on his 178 pounds. This is St. Andrews, America's oldest golf club. We're building a brand new community here. Yes, we want quality, so we chose textured Manville shingles. I think that rugged Manville look is great. And of course, in the attics and walls, there's Manville gold fiberglass insulation. Plenty of it. For energy savings and extra comfort year-round. When you're building, it's nice to know you've got Manville quality shingles and Manville quality insulation. Two fine products that make your house a home. It's a big step, Tom. I'm still going to go to college, Dad, but after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics. Then I can qualify for the Army College Fund. If you qualify, the Army College Fund will help you accumulate as much as $20,100 for tuition. So you're going to be a soldier? Be all that you can be. And an engineer. You can do it. Be a good one. In the Army. For college football, Auburn linebacker Greg Carr. To play college football really does take a lot of sacrifice by the individual. And I think if the student athlete is to excel both in the classroom and on the football field, it takes a great amount of desire and determination by the athlete. But it can be done. Sometimes it's hard to come off the practice field and force yourself to study. But you know that you're doing the right thing, and you know in years to come it'll pay off. The college experience. It's more than football. The best men and women professional golfers join forces at the J.C. Penney Classic. Catch ESPN's complete coverage starting Thursday. Down from a 32, Texas A&M leading 23 to nothing. And that is Sanders, and Sanders picks up about five yards. Before he is taken down by Tony DeGray. Todd Dodge looks like he may not come back in again, but we're going to watch it. Todd Howard, 73, will be on the bottom, and Ray Childers will be on the top. Look at the bottom. There's Howard, and there's Childers on the top. That's 280 on top. And Dodge went down. Dodge along the sideline, and Brett Stafford, the freshman out of Belden, Texas, is taking snaps from Gene Shilton, the center on the sideline. Second down and five to go from the 37 yard line. That old big hole, tremendous hole. He's got the first down. He's dragged down from behind by June James at the 49 yard line of Texas. It is not the fact that the Aggies are in front of Texas, it's how dominating Texas AM has been tonight. And what, when, when they go, the play is run to the inside, but Tony DeGray goes down inside and gives up the hole. When he gave up the hole, Sanders broke it back. June James makes the tackle. But Tony DeGrate overran the hole. I think Jim Wacker of TCU, after what happened to them by AM last week, is saying, I told you so. That good looking football team tonight. And straight ahead again goes Sanders. And remember that Kevin Murray, who was a newcomer to the in the Southwest Conference, broke his ankle in the third game of the year. And Craig Stump took over then. Murray, is, they figure he is going to be something. And also remember that Cheryl is only playing four of his freshmen that he recruited of the 30 he recruited this year. Well, Houston went ahead 19-14. Right. But Rice just scored again. Whoop, whoop, slow down, boys. Can you believe that? That puts Rice ahead again. And Houston's got a win to go to the Cotton Bowl. We'll have updates for you. And if the game is close, we'll go to him at the end of the 
this game, because that game started later than ours. Second down, eight to go. Texas A&M, Bernstein is in there. Bernstein gets inside the 45. Hanging on is James McKinney, number 87, along with Ralph Darnell. And it'll be third down and about three. Make it almost four. A quiet, quiet Texas crowd. 2019 right. 2019 right. Yeah. right. They went for two and missed the two. Hmm. <laughs> this man well, that's a surprise. Man. And this is a surprise. We're watching here, although it's not close. Auburn today was a surprise. They lost. LSU goes to the Sugar Bowl. Keel is wide to the right. Nelson has caught a touchdown pass to the left. He has stumped, throwing out, and there's a flag down. Interference call. It's Griffin. Hit Nelson before Nelson got the ball. And this is not pass interference because Nelson would have never had a chance of getting this ball. This ball was high and away. No, sir. I don't he agree does, with it. He doesn't agree with it. Wendell Sheldon, the... I don't agree with him. The referee is taking what his umpire back judge said. He didn't say it, but... Nice defense. Defense. Automatic. First down. Ball is on the 32. Let's see it. Look where the ball is thrown. Stump throws to Nelson. Griffin is there. Now look, up in the air, he has no chance of getting that ball. None whatsoever. The ball is thrown about 20 yards beyond him. First down Aggies are up by 23 points. Bernstein hit in the backfield, gets away, breaks the tackle, graves the man and brings him down, close to another first down. Time running, 5.14 to go in the third quarter. And the Aggies look stronger and stronger, and Texas doesn't look like they're getting any stronger. Defensive line charge. Here's the blocking by the offensive line. Everybody's being held up. Now, there was a missed tackle by Aldridge in the backfield on Bernstein, but Jerry Gray is not going to miss. Ball is at the 22-yard line. A score here might send a lot of the Longhorn faithful home early. Power tonight either. Oh, Mark. And if they should miss the Cotton Bowl, if Rice should beat Houston, that'd be two chances they'd have to get a pick the fullback. You see what I see, Paul? The AM offensive line is beginning to dominate the Texas defensive line. They did throughout the first half. They had big gains, but now they're beginning to move them out of there. What they're doing, if you notice, the majority of the evening, Texas AM, they're running to their left, the right side of the defense, away from DeGreat and McKinney, back the other way, and they're not being able to stop them. Browner, James, second down, and five to go. Ball on the 17. And there is Sanders. Down to the 15. Well, Rice and Houston have a Donnybrook to report on it. Let's go to George Graham. I will tell you one thing. No one is going home at the Astrodome because Rice is taking the lead once again, 20 to 19 over Houston. Watch this 74-yard TD pass. Mark Pomalander, who was 6 of 9 for 108 yards in the first half, throws what looks like an interception. But Tony Burnett, the intended receiver, steals the ball, races 74 yards for a score. Two-point conversion failed, but Rice still leads Houston by a score of 20 to 19 late third quarter. Three backs for the Aggies on third and short. A couple of yards to go, and easily picking it up is Tony. He's down to the 10-yard line, and that is a first down for Texas A&M. Jim, we talked about moving Matt Darwin to center to guard, number 78. Matt Wilson is the center taking his place. What's the center? Out to the linebacker, Edwards. There's a little bit of holding, not a whole lot. But look at how far he takes Edwards off the line of scrimmage, five yards. He is one of the freshmen that is playing this year for Jackie Sherrill. That is a great move before a ball game, and it really has paid off. It stabilizes Tony DeGreat. The center, Matt Wilson, is doing well. Matt Darwin is doing well on Tony DeGreat. And they didn't have to come here to Austin and listen to all the Texas Longhorn talk. They were busted in, got here about an hour and a half before game time, and will be bussed right back to College Station after this is over. First down from the 10-yard line. And there's the second man through, and he's got a lot of room, and that's Sanders, of course. Down to about the 5-yard line. Ty Allen and Gene James making the tackle. I can't believe the way they're running at the middle of the Texas defensive line. They're dominating them, Paul. That's what they you really said are. and I've said. Stedman, Stedman, Wilson, and Darwin 
the three men on the inside, the two guards in the center, are doing such a great job inside that we're not hearing that much from the middle linebacker, Tony Edwards, who is the leading tackler. And the great has made only a few plays, but many times have run away from him. A fullback, and that is Tony again. And now it is going to be third down and short. Gene James in on yet another tackle, along with Tony Edwards, who did make an appearance there. Power here, you're going to see 62 come in, but this man, Tony, has been running very well. Edwards is also there, 63, but he's powering to the goal line. Now, where are they? They're at the three. 2.15 to go, third quarter. Aggie's running a lot of time off the clock and a chance to get a score and put this completely out of reach. Give it to the fullback, and that's a touchdown. Tony's got his second. one in Texas. <laughs> I tell you what, any chance that Texas might be harboring now with just about 17 minutes to go, and they're down in a moment, perhaps by 30 points, that's asking a little much. Anthony Tony. We've got to pick our Chevrolet players of the game for both squads, $1,000 to the general scholarship on the beach in the name of Chevrolet. Derek Franklin comes in. He's been kicking well tonight and kicks again. He's just absolutely perfect tonight. Are you ready? I'll give it to you. Texas nothing. Texas A&M 30. And there goes Anthony Tony inside. That's Edwards. Now remember, Edwards is 6'2", 260. Is the middle linebacker. Could not stop it. Here they're coming right at you. 63 is Edwards. He sees the play coming in. Anthony Tony runs into him and runs over the Aggies lead 30 to nothing. And don't you think the Aggies and their fans will have a great winter in spring? If you don't know the law, you should know lawyer Jim Adler. After most accidents involving serious personal injury, injuries like these must deal with insurance companies. You need a real pro in your corner. Jim Adler of Adler & O'Connor is a real pro, and he cares about you. Call Jim at 953-9400 for a free appointment. Experience counts, and Jim has it. No fee unless you win. Call 953-9400 now. If you're looking for complete, accurate, and up-to-the-minute sports information, take down these numbers right now. Scoreline is a special service for people who like to keep up with sports and want minute-to-minute -minute information on injuries, weather, and game conditions. You'll get time changes as well as up-to-the-minute scores during games and final scores from around the country. Scoreline is a free service with expert opinions from some of the best handicappers around the country. Our complete information is given slowly so you don't miss what you want. Call Scoreline at these numbers right now. The information you need is waiting for you now. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire looking in on a shocking loss of Texas to Texas A&M. At least it appears that way. Fred Akers has to be shocked. Was in the running for the Cotton Bowl for the second week in a row. And apparently he's going to the second week in a row. Aggies haven't won on the road all year long. And we'll repeat ourselves again in 46 tries. Until tonight, they won only six at Memorial Stadium. And Houston has gone back on top of right. Tell you what, I think the Longhorns will feel a lot better, or somewhat better, if Houston goes ahead and wins that. The second this opportunity. Allen Smith to kick off. And this is Kevin Nelson at the two. 15, look out up the middle. Look out up the middle, and he gets it across the corner. Brett Stafford, who was warming up, and let's see if he checks in, because Todd Dodge has a bruised sternum again. Well, the freshman is coming in. Jim, watch, watch this hole open up, and watch the man that really has to make the tackle, Alan Smith, the kicker, saying, oh, no. He gets a piece up, gets a little bit of help, and that's Holly number two that, that makes the tackle. As Reveille retiring after tonight's game, what a way to go out. There will be a new Reveille, of course. That Stafford, as we said, is in the ball game. The freshman at quarterback. He's got to throw. And he's going to run. And he gets out to about midfield. And they may lose another quarterback if he continues to scramble like that. We're going to 
took take, a hit. Okay, we're going to take another look at Alan Smith. Now, remember, only one shoe. He's coming down. He's, this, my guys will get him. Oh, no, here he comes. Oh, my. Oh, well, oh, oh. there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> At him all the way. He got a piece of him, though. Yes, That's sir. all he really had to do. Good for you, Alan. The ball is on the 49-yard line. Second down and two to go. Stafford running this way. Throwing this way. And he stands too hard, and he is put down there by Darrell Austin. But that's another first down at the 39-yard line. 140 left, third quarter. This Childress, we talk, we've talked about him. Ray Childress, nine sacks, well, ten. Gets his feet cut out from him right there by Chester, number 72. That's good block. All at the 34-yard line. Jackie Sherrill's team is up by 30. Longhorns have not scored yet. Now they put Billboard Bryant and Brent Duhon both to the right. Warshell is a flanker that way, and that's the way Stafford is looking. And there's a blitz on, but he gets the ball away under thrown. That was Lance Jackson, the strong safety. More news on Rice Houston. Let's go back to George Graham. Okay, at the Astrodome, Houston has taken the lead once again, 25-20 to 20 over Rice this time. And Raymond Tate is the man, the man who rushed for 93 yards last week against Texas A&M. Bolts after the guard pulls, he rambles 27 yards. Tommy Holmes can't get his hands on him as he breaks a couple of tackles. Raymond Tate's 27-yard TD run. The two-point conversion was no good, so Houston leads by five, 25-20, still third quarter. Second down, 10, Stafford throwing out here, and that ball was intended for more show. Did he get it? Yes. At the 21-yard line, and that is a first down. Now remember... As you take a look at this replay, we'll keep checking on Houston and Rice. Moore is a linebacker on Moore's shell, but what's Moore's shell? The diving catch in that beautiful two hands, caught the ball, out of bounds. He was a quarterback last year, as we said. What did he ever get started? 124 and counting. This is not the best position of Texas thus far. They were first down at the 11-yard line. Stafford looking to run. He's going to be dragged down by Holland. That's almost the first down. They've got 30 points to go and about 16 minutes in which to do it. To get back to Rice and Houston, remember, that game is in doubt. We will go to that game once this game ends. So that game started later than ours did. Very happy man along the sideline. All of Texas A&M people should be happy at this point. That's Gilbert. That's one. Dodge is up, but Stafford is in. Second down, three at the 14-yard line. Two wide receiver, Stafford rolling this way now. Getting the ball away for Duhon, but well past him, covered by Darrell Austin. Well, now to third down. They've come up empty every time so far. When you throw the ball, you must get away from the oncoming people on defense. Here comes Stafford out. It's a tough pass to throw, but he gets hit just as he throws the ball. That's number 11, Johnny Holland. Whoa. There's the time in the third quarter, and that is the surprising score. 30 to nothing, the Aggies. This is war down here. They love this game, and Texas has been dominating. None of the Aggie players have been around, perhaps the exception of Sanders, since the last time they beat Texas. And there, Flowers makes a great, great diving save. Yuhan, the intended receiver. And now it is fourth down, and they got to go for it. When you're down with 29 seconds to go in the quarter, by 30 points, it's time. Billboard Bryant comes over to get the word from Fred Aker. Putting Hayes back in, the wide receiver number 14. Duhon is out. Morshell and Orr are the running backs. They can throw to Morshell, as you've seen. Bill Boer Bryant goes wide to the right. This is fourth down, remember. Three to go. They're going for the three or all of them. A dodge. Throws it out there, and they're going to come up with it. They go to the tight end. That is Harris. Touchdown. Tight end screen. Beautiful play. What a call. Made by Akers on the sideline. William Harris came into this game leading in receptions of Texas team. 29 receptions going in, 18.8 yards per, per catch. But 
This is a beautifully designed screen. There's how they set it up. That's William Harris out there. Stewart is out there with him, number 78. Harris breaks off. He's, he's got the first down right here. Really didn't get a block downfield. He just ran through the defense on his own. As he scored there, Houston moved farther out in front of Rice. They're out in front by the score of 28 to nothing now. Apparently on their way to the Cotton Bowl. Texas apparently on their way to the Freedom Bowl and SMU to the Aloha Bowl. Dapper looking for two, throwing over there and does not get it. Trying to Bill Boy Bryant. And so it is 30 to 6 with 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. Now, watch as Stafford sets this up. He's looking to his left, pivots around, throws the screen back over to the tight end. William Harris, he does get one block right there, but other than that, now he's moving downfield. The other players are really not giving him any blocking. He just runs through the defensive secondary. 6'5", 234, a sophomore. Led the club in, in catches before tonight and has been the leading receiver tonight. Eight plays, less than two minutes off the clock. Didn't get the two-point conversion. But let's see how they play this ball. What do you do? You're down now, 30-6. to six. You got it better than a quarter. You have to kick it away, or do you try something daring in a game in which you've been dominated all but the last minute and 43 seconds? The three touchdowns and a field goal away from a tie. One quarter to play. You've answered my question. And this time here, I would kick, you would kick deep. Hoping but, to stop them or get the turnover. Yeah, get the turnover. Now, if they score again quick, that's when you start you start your onside kick stuff. Jeff Nelson goes back as the deep man. And the Aggies are not expecting any type of freak or onside kicks at all. They're in the normal kick return coverage. I think you gave the score at Houston 28-0. It's 28 nothing. It's 28-20. I'm sorry. That would yeah. have shocked a lot of people. <laughs> there it is right there. We've been giving... They would have scared me to death. Oh. I don't wonder how they took that 20 off there. They recovered a fumble. Houston did on the 12-yard line. And ended up with a field goal. Now, here's Nelson. Back at the 2. The 1. That's yeah. a little lane. That's a little lane. The kicker's coming over. The kicker takes him down. That is Jeff Ward, the kicker that took him down. But not until they get across the 35-yard line. Outstanding field position after the 34-yard return. Now they should have kicked the onside kick, Jim. Look at the field position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Stump has had a good, good game, Jim. They've, all, they've played well this entire Texas A&M team. There's special teams everywhere. I would assume that Texas A&M will not get a playoff. If they do... They're going against themselves. They should let this clock run down. But apparently, well, I can see now Nelson was one out of bounds. The clock just stopped. They got to go. So Sanders carries the ball. And Sanders has a clock stopped with eight seconds to go as Braggs puts him down. But he picked up about seven yards. And a flag is down on the play. David Braggs, number six. He got a holding. Stop along with Broner. That's what it is. The Aggies scored 30 points before Texas got their first six. The bowl situation this year. Those who, in all conferences, in all bowls, who could have gone and for some reason or other did not go, and those who did not expect to go who are winding up there. Did you say the bowl oh, picture please. is rather bizarre? Oh, First down. Can you imagine the celebration in Louisiana tonight? They didn't even play today. But Alabama upset Auburn, and LSU's going to the trigger ball. And now I'm Craig Stump wants time out with eight seconds to go in the quarter. And Rice has the ball first and goal on the six-yard line. Well, oh, they just scored. The Lady Auburn basketball squad turned to right number three in the nation. I'm out on the 27-yard line taken by Texas A&M. At the Frank Irwin Center. And Craig Stump, red shirt freshman out of Port Arthur, Texas, Jefferson High. Over talking to Jackie Sherrill, who's been getting some heat. Although if you talk to school officials, they figure that Sherrill is right on target. He has got a bundle of people he is not playing this year, young people who will be able to play. And, of course, he's finishing in a rush. He knocked off TCU last week, and at this moment is manhandling Texas. So they 
think it's Cheryl might be right on target. Jimmy signed a five-year contract, and each year, so, so you understand the terminology, after each year, they've rolled it over a year, so he's always on a five-year contract. He is in the first year of five years now, and he's been there, what, three years? That's All right. a big number, too, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. First down, 10. From the 27th, and Stump is put down. And that was June James, and time has run out in the third quarter. And it is Texas A&M 30 and Texas 6 here in Austin. Bronco 2 never made it. S10 Blazer 4x4 never made it. No four-wheeler made ever made it until the new Jeep Cherokee became the first to win all three 4x4 of the year awards in 1984. And Cherokee has higher ground clearance than Bronco or Blazer and more cargo space. Get triple award-winning Cherokee performance for the luxury of the new Wagoneer only in a Jeep. There are lots of times when overnight is just not fast enough. Hello, Federal. I've got to get this to the coast today. With Zap Mail, we can get an exact copy of something clear across the country in just two hours from the minute you pick up the phone. Contracts, documents, drawings, whatever. Incredibly, in just two hours. Zap Mail from Federal Express, when overnight is just not fast enough. Out for a day just chasing the sun, or doing the work that's got to be done, or riding a race that's got to be won, Kawasaki. Now with a choice of three-wheelers that offer low prices, high performance, and about everything in between. And for one more wheel of a time, check out the all-new Bayou four-wheeler. Get the best of both worlds at your Kawasaki dealer. Nasty out there. Someday to run. Stiff looks good. You still nervous about tomorrow? Well, it is my first 10K run. I just hope I can do it. Of course you can. You worked hard, ate right. Here, eat your Campbell's. It's good for you. Campbell's chicken noodle soup. It's nice when something that tastes so good can make you feel so good. I'm surprised you're worried about finishing. Finishing? I'm worried about winning. Campbell's Rushing. Texas A&M, that's the one you want to look at. That's what's been hurting Texas all night long. 194 yards rushing to 48 yards rushing. Second down and 23. Stump back, stump throwing for... Whoops, it's knocked up in the air. Intended across the way for Mark Lewis at tight end. And a good play made by Moran. Now it is third down and long. Houston is now leading Rice 28-23. If that game is in doubt, as we said before, when this game is over, we will go to that game. By the way, in this stadium, in all of the Texas Aggie history of playing here, the most points they've ever scored, nearly 30 years ago, 34 points. They've got 30 thus far. But this is third and bigger. They'll have to give it up. And now, did they get Texas to move by faking the blitz? Are the Aggies to move, rather, by faking the blitz? I think they did. They faked the blitz in the center, who is the freshman, Matt Wilson. Down they got a little edgy. Jerry Gray coming up inside. Looked like he was going to blitz. Ran up to the line of scrimmage. They moved. Another five yards tacked on. This is third in, what, 28 now? Mm -hmm. Stand ball. Ball start. Offense. Third down. Jackie Sherrill looking on. We'll repeat ourselves. It is a beautiful night. A very comfortable night in Austin, Texas. No need for jackets or anything like that. Temperature probably in the low 60s at the moment. Here's the third down and 28 play. Ball back inside. And they give the ball to Vic, the big fullback, who gives them some room out across the 30-yard line. But they'll have to kick the ball back. Bragg makes the stop, along with Gray and Allard. And so Todd Schaunt is in, and I believe this is his second punt of the evening. Only one in the first half, and this one. Marshall is deep. The up man is felt at the 40-yard line. Last time Schaunt's kicked, he got a great roll out of it, but did not have a good kick. 
The results were good. Much better looking this time. Driving Morshaw back inside the 20 for the 17. Good coverage. Outstanding coverage down there. By Domingo Bryant. And he has had some big plays. An interception and a block field goal. And he makes that tackle back in a moment. There's a style in your life. No one could ever deny. You're on your way to the top. And along the way. It's exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you going, it's Michelob. It's the only body you'll ever have. Make the most of it. And if you're serious about exercise, and you should be, why not the best? Nautilus for the home. For full information about the new and revolutionary Nautilus for the Home, call toll-free 1-800-445-9000. That's 1-800-445-9000. Tonight's game from Austin brought to you by the 4200 Investment Executives of Payne Weber and more than 285 offices nationwide. Thank you, Payne Weber. Acapella chorus. Like Bevo, he is not for charge tonight. Reveille, the mascot of AM, is. Bevo's got the right to be unhappy. Texas with the ball, first down at their own 21 yard line. Or and Morshell are the setback. Or playing the fullback spot most of the night. And this is Brett Stafford looking and putting it up high. Trying to beat everybody. And down there, Brett Duhon cannot get to it. Daryl Austin was with it. Duhon had a step on Austin, but the ball was thrown too far by Stafford. Jim, you know, we're going to later on. We've got to thank an awful lot of people for this entire year in the CFA, which I've enjoyed on the Monday night games. But there's two people that work for us. Monday night? There's, yeah, what is what, it? This Saturday. is Saturday. Where Same have you thing. been for three I'm months? I'm thinking USFL's coming. Saturday night. But there's two guys we must thank that are in the truck that really help us. And without them, we couldn't do it. And that's Fred Gardelli and, and Tommy Small. They've that's done a right. great job. Second down. There's Stafford looking, uh oh, in trouble and he's not going to get out of it. Picks up a couple of yards only and took a big hit. Lance Jackson was over there. Sadler was chasing him. And now it is third down and long, about eight to go from the 22. I said something in the first half at the beginning of the game, and I'm going to say it again about the offense. Football and your quarterback and your run on a rollout to the short side of the field, especially, you cut your field down into a third, especially when you're a right handed passer running to your left. It's a difficult throw to throw back. That's just not having a good night on third down conversion. Stafford will try to change that. The blitz is on, gets the ball away. Holland gets a hand on the ball, and 10 for Harris, and knocks it up and away from him. And now it is fourth down, and Texas, trailing 30-6, to six, must give the ball back to the Aggies. They're having a tough time on blocking the assignments. Gene Shelton, the big center. Watch this. This is the Coke machine. He's blocking at the line of scrimmage. That's Whitfield. He goes over here and blocks his own man. Huh. Uh, they got to know, Gene, the difference between the orange shirts okay. and the white shirts. It sure helps. Jimmy Hawkins deep for the kick of Don, John Telchik. And this is his sixth punt of the night. Texas has not turned the ball over but once. But they haven't done much with it when they've had the ball. Hawkins does not call for the fair catch and will not get much out of this. Matter of fact, didn't even get back to his original spot where he caught the ball. 13.08 left of the game, 30-6, to the Aggies. Investing these days is a little bit like you playing tennis against Jimmy Connors. You're going to need all the professional help you can get. Payne Weber can supply that help. A full range of services and a financial advice to help you make those difficult decisions. Because at Payne Weber, we believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investments. Hey, great match. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Payne Weber. Next time I'm with those guys on my team, okay? Some people would rather put up with dandruff than use a dander shampoo. I guess they think they're too harsh. A shampoo should care for hair. Mine does. Its special self-balancing formula sends dandruff protection only where I need it. On my scalp, not on my hair. And it gently conditions where it's needed. Leaves my hair soft, healthy looking. 
My shampoo? Yeah, it's a dander shampoo. But it's today's head and shoulders, and it cares for my hair. Wednesday, ESPN brings you live coverage of the Australian Open Women's Semifinals. See who comes out on top in the land down under, live Wednesday. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire at Austin, Texas. The Aggies have the lead, 30 to 6, and the football. Nelson and Teal both come wide to the left on first down from a 33. And there's Bernstein carrying the football for a couple of yards only across the 35. Stephen Bragg, number six, led the tacklers. Well, earlier in the year, and Fred Akers and his staff will tell you, they didn't deserve it, although they were glad to have it, because they knew what a young ball club they had. Texas was number one in the nation. Then as early as, or as late as last week, going in against Baylor, they had the Cotton Bowl just about locked up. Something happened on the way to the end of the season. They lost to Baylor. They lost to number one ranking, and they are losing big to the Aggies. They've not won in four years and haven't won but six times here in history. And they, I believe, let time run out again. No, I, I, I think there's movement in the line. I think, I think so. The top side tackle Williams. took off ahead of time, yeah. Twenty-eight, twenty-three. the end of three quarters, Houston leads right. Houston wins it, they go to the Cotton Bowl. If the game is in doubt, we go to Houston once this game is over. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Tell you what, Texas A&M is really stepping up big in their football program. Stand ball, ball start, offense, second down. And according to those who know, it does not reflect in the one loss column yet. But they believe good things are around the corner. Young football team. Second down. 12 to go. Number 31. Nope. Back to his tailback, Bernstein. Yeah, he doesn't get much. Jim, and, and a good thing, too, when you have a young football team like Texas A&M and you're not really going anywhere bowl-wise, and it is a long time between December and again in August when you start to work out again and start playing in September, but to carry this kind of a game over from one year to the next really helps the players, especially young players. The Aggies in their band and... Well, the faces along the side line of Texas show you how devastated they are with what's going on out on the field. They're down and running with the ball is Tony. And Tony gets across the 35-yard line. And that is about all. Ty Howard has made a lot of tackles tonight, number 48. And Stephen Braggs has too, and they were both over there then. Now, the Aggies will have to give the ball back to the Longhorns. 11.20 left. So Todd Schantz is on for yet another kick. The last time he kicked the ball 50 yards. More shell goes deep. John standing on his own 21. Gets the ball away. Another good kick. And more shell calls for fair catch inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. 10.59 left. I'm running out on Texas. They trail 30-6 to six to the Aggies. Time for a day just chasing the sun or doing the work that's got to be done or riding a race that's got to be won. Kawasaki. Now with a choice of three-wheelers that offer low prices, high performance, and about everything in between. And for one more wheel of a time, check out the all-new Bayou Four-Wheeler. Get the best of both worlds at your Kawasaki dealer. Winners Scotch Video Cassettes for having pioneered and perfected videotape. Watching your favorites day after day, keeping the wonder play after play, knowing the color and brightness of stay. Only from Scotch, our cobalt encapsulated oxide for world class clarity. The world watches, world watches Scotch. Buy Scotch Video Cassettes and save $100 on a round trip airline ticket. Tomorrow, the greatest foursome in golf, Nicholas, Palmer, Player, and Watson, shoot for a quarter-million-dollar jackpot at last Sunday's Skins game. The excitement tees off tomorrow. Remember, Doug Flutie did win the Heisman Trophy. Everybody expected he did it. And our special on Doug, the little big man, tomorrow night, Sunday night at 8 o'clock. And 
near Stafford, and boy, that's good coverage there, but he gets out, he gets the ball up in the air, and it is caught by Duhon at the 35-yard line, first down. Layton couldn't do a thing about it. Johnson is down, but he's down only because he's lost a shoe. No, he's coming back in the ballgame. We've seen this all night long where the quarterbacks are running for their lives. Been sacked four or five times tonight. Stafford does a great job. He gets away from Johnny Hall at number 11. Takes a shot going out of bounds. Duhon comes across. He's hit. That's also pass interference by uh, Slate. Fastest man on the Texas team, Epps. Oh, they lost the football and down he goes. Calvin Epps, who's been bothered with a hamstring, came in and was wide to the left and just took a 40-yard sprint downfield for no reason at all because Stafford lost the ball coming away from center. Getting loosened up. Yeah. They miss Epps, a junior, out of Dallas. The exchange, Shelton. Stafford, it is the exchange. Look at this. Never got the ball in his hands. And it looked to me like Stafford might have pulled out just a little bit too soon. Then he trips over his own man. It's not been a good night. Second down and 16 from the 29. Epps has come out of the ball game. Stafford rolling out. Now runs with the football. And gets out of the 40-yard line. Uh, he's picked up more yardage, but he's also playing right into the hands of the Aggies. So his time is just getting off that clock. It's down near the nine-and-a-half-minute mark now, and they're down by 24 points. They'll let him run all night. You're exactly right. They, they, they want Stafford to run with the football as long as the quarterback has got the ball. They know he's not going to blistering speed. He's going to pick up a few yards. Now it'll be, what, third and almost six? Mm -hmm. And Epps is back in. Look out! Hooks was on again, and there's Domingo Bryant. There haven't been too many plays we've called Bryant, but we've got him on an interception, blocking a field goal, a sack, and a big defensive play. And he's hurt. He hurt his knee. Domingo Bryant just firing in, playing a tremendous game defensively. Here he comes to the outside. No one blocked. When they rolled out, you've got to pick up the first guy coming. Did not do that. Bryant was there. Fourth down, and Telchik will punt for the seventh time tonight. Oh, good kick. Hawkins takes it at the 21. Hefty little moves there, and is finally thrown down by number 91, Carroll, a defensive end. Well, I don't know whether she's happy or not, but she certainly is a nice-looking young spectator. 8.45 left. Texas A&M 30, Texas 6. And time is running out on the Longhorns of Texas. When you buy a new Chevy from H.A. Ford Chevrolet, you've moved up to a winning combination of sales and service. For 14 years, the service department at H.A. Ford has kept those Chevy cars and trucks running and our customers happy. The trained technicians are friendly, thorough, and efficient to ensure maximum customer satisfaction. So go with the winners, the service crew of A.J. Ford Chevrolet. Winning deals on winning wheels at A.J. Ford. For nearly a century in Houston, one menswear establishment has stood above the rest. Zindler's. Not an average store, but unique, specializing in extraordinary sizes for the big and tall man. Zindler's. Attentive to the needs of our clients, providing personal attention and quality tailoring. Zindler's. Husbands, fathers, brothers, hard to shop for? Zindler's, the big and tall fashion people, offer gift certificates. Visit Zindler's two locations, Broadway at Belfort and Post Oak Boulevard in the Galleria Circle. George Grant updating you on another critical game, Houston against Rice. That game now in the fourth quarter with Houston leading Rice 28-23. to We'll update you on that one at the end of our game. And don't forget, on the Chevrolet College Football Report, we'll hear from Doug Flutie, who, yes, is the Heisman Trophy winner. We'll also hear from Howard Schnellenberg, who's the new coach at Louisville. That's after the game. You've heard all those Aggie jokes. Jim, haven't you? Well, there's the reason why right there. I tell you what, who's laughing hardest, though? Yeah. He is. Yes, he At is. At 30 to 6. They uh, give it to Bernstein. The second man through gets across the 30-yard line. And that is about all. But that takes more time off the clock. They're counting down, and we'll, by the time they get the next play underway, it'll be less than eight and a half minutes. SMU, they are all through at 6 and 2 in the Southwest Conference. They're leading UNLV, which is also 3 nothing. 
a good football team, SMU. We saw them last weekend against Arkansas. Nelson wide to the left. They're just running time now. That's sure. Six. Here's tackled by Edwards. Jimmy, you know, another name we haven't mentioned or heard, we haven't heard from up here in the booth than we usually do during the course of a game. Our director, Mark Payton, didn't he go to Texas? Yes, he did. It's awful quiet. Yes, very quiet. Well, that's why. He's showing us why. The score right there on the screen. <laughs> that will keep track on that Houston Rice game for you. Houston is leading, but only by a little bit. And if it's in doubt, we'll go to it once this game is over. What a shocker for the Longhorn fans to close out with losses to Baylor and Texas A&M. And that's thrown behind the intended receiver, who is Shea Walker. And they'll have to give the ball back to Texas. Well, the Aggie offense has not been able to run a lot of time off that clock and keep their defense off the field. Their defense is doing so well. That's the better part of the game. The defense, you know, we said we thought that the defense could stop Texas at the beginning. The question was, could the offense score? They have 30 points. You know, Texas has not scored more than 15 points in about four of the last six games. This will make five out of seven. Look at this kick. Well, that was under pressure, driving Morshell all the way back to the 14-yard line. Great coverage downfield, and see you later. He's got a two-yard return. The Texas punt block attempt did not work. Shantz got off a tremendous kick of 53 yards. 7.16 to go. Now remember, Sunday night at 8, uh, December the 3rd at 8.30 p.m., we'll go back to that Skins, that wonderful two-day golf playoff between Palmer, Watson, Nicholas, and Gary Clare. And on the second day, the second nine holes, they were going for $240,000. I think you probably know who won it all, but you'll be able to see it all at 8.30 Sunday night. Stafford throws to Duhon. And that is close to a first down across the 25-yard line. Again, Todd ha Howard, number 73, the linebacker, the one that sacked Todd Dodge earlier in the game, was in the backfield. He's just having a good day. And Howard is a sophomore, hometown man out of Bryan, Texas. Russell Hayes has returned to the game. Late but little. Duhon comes out. Bill Bear, Bill Boy Bryant goes wide left. Johnson is a fullback. Look out! Look out, Stafford. He throws the ball. It was intended for Johnson. That was Howard again on the blitz. Howard, I think it's Greg Wright, number 71. He's running to be on the top of the screen. Stafford goes back. Yeah, it is right. He didn't even slow down Howard. Todd Howard is there in Stafford's face. That's two plays in a row he's been in his face. He's just been teeing off and going, knowing that Texas has to throw the football. Isn't it wonderful how one game can make a season even though you may not have done well as far as wins and losses are concerned? Dodge is hurt. Bruce Turner, I'll tell you what I mean. If you don't know already, he's going to come back. That's intended for Hayes. What a fine catch at the 37-yard line. What a fine one-handed catch. And there's going to be holding called against Texas. We'll bring it back. Texas A&M has Holly listed as a wide receiver. He is there playing defensive back on Hayes. Holly got up, went up, thought he was going to make the interception. But look at Hayes juggling the ball, concentration, keeping his eye on the ball on the way down. They still... They said it was holding one way, and I think it's face mask the other, and will allow Wendell Sheldon to sort it out for us. One flag was thrown inside the 30. The other was thrown downfield. We have a face mask against the defense right. while the ball is in the air. Right. The penalty is declined. Right. They take the ball at the okay. spot. First down. Now, what was the flag to thrown from down around the 25-yard line on the other side? I have no idea unless that official could see downfield to see what was happening. From the 47-yard line. Wuhan is on the near side. We're updating that Houston game. It's now 31-23. Houston, they just kicked the field goal. And 
Poster and closer to the Cotton Bowl. With Stafford throwing a more shell behind it. Now I'll go back. Can you imagine Georgia Tech? Not a good season. They buried Georgia. Alabama losing season first time since the 50s. They upset Auburn. Baylor last week losing season. Bad season. They beat Texas. Aggies looking for the first season ever under Jackie Sherrill are beating Texas. One game can make a big difference. It certainly can. And, and, and again, one more time, let's go back. Here it is at 31-23, a field goal by Houston. But again, the carryover of this game. And we have a young Texas team. And this loss, two losses in a row coming out of the season, that's got to hurt. Epps is back in and wide to the left. Tapper throws. And that's Epps down there. And it's behind Epps in his coverage. Darrell Austin. And that was Lance Jackson with a flag down again. Jackson has blitzed more than once tonight from a strong safety spot. This time they're taking to the Aggies. It's holding against Texas. 6.43 left in the game, 30-6. to six. Well, we can sort things out now. We're not giving that Houston game to Houston. Price is still in it, but a Houston victory. That would mean that SMU stays in Loja Bowl, Texas goes to the Freedom Bowl, and Houston goes to the Cotton Bowl. You know, Jim, you see holding now, but you find out how good your offensive linemen are when you know the defensive linemen are just going to just tee off and go. There's the holding is on the right-hand side, and I think it's John Stewart, number 78. That is holding. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> we're having to go away. Stafford disappear. Holding. Offense. Second down. Ball is on the 33-yard line. It is second down and 20 to go. Hayes and Evans. Pick up some yardage here, but and he lost the football. Gene Shelton got, got back on it, I think, number 74. You know the man that hit him, don't you? Johnny Holland, the linebacker, the man is the leading tackler from Texas A&M. He caught the quarterback coming downfield. He wanted a piece of him in the worst way and just labeled Stafford. Jackie Sherrill, his team would wind up 6-5. and five. The first time he's had a winning season since going down there. This is his third year. Aggies have lost three in a row to Texas. Not to break that scheme. Here's Stafford running again. And he's being chased again. And he's going to go down again. Holland got him from behind at the 29-yard line. They'll stop the clock just to move the six, but it's under six minutes now. You, you know, you talked earlier about the speed of these two linebackers, Holland and Ford. Ford misses Stafford. He sees no one open downfield. They're in a deep zone coverage. Now, watch Stafford. First of all, Ken Ford, number 19, dives, misses. But John Holland, he's behind. Watch him catch him from behind. Great speed for a linebacker. Mr. Anywhere and Mr. Everywhere. There's Big Bertha. Time has been called. We have 5.43 to go, and the game is all the Aggies, 30-6 to six over the Longhorns. The financial world, where investing is like being on the receiving end of a Jimmy Connors serve. Here you need a Payne Weber broker to guide you, to back you up, to offer action-oriented recommendations to help turn the unpredictable to your advantage. Because at Payne Weber, we believe that the quality of life this might depend on the quality of your investment. Well played, Bob. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Payne Weber. What do I have to do? Open up a Payne Weber account? It started in 1933 with our first electric. Then came typing that looked like printing. The revolutionary Selectric. And Selectrics that correct mistakes. 1984. IBM introduces a Selectric System 2000. The Wheelwriter Typewriters and the Quiet Writer Typewriter. A new generation of typewriters from the company that makes the typewriters secretaries prefer most. Ball at the 29-yard line. And I'm looking, Todd Dodge has come back in. Stafford is out. Dodge is back to throw. And now he's going to run. Now he's going to throw. And that is a touchdown. That is Hayes. Russell Hayes. Oh, it looked like that ball went off the turf. It really did. It looked like it bounced into his hand. Hayes, Dodge was not throwing the ball to Hayes. I want to let you understand that right now. Here comes Dodge. He's going to step up 
up in the pocket. When the ball is thrown, it's not thrown to Hayes. There's the man that's thrown to Harris, but it, no, it doesn't go off the ground. Was his knee down on the ground, though? we got to go back and take a look at that. Was his knee on the ground? If he put his knee down, if his knee touches the ground, he should have been down about the three-yard line. Todd Dodge scrambling for his life. Here's the throw. Is the knee down? Yes, yes. it's down. Knee was down. Hayes should have been called down at the three flat. I don't think it's going to make any difference. And now here's Dodge throwing, and that is no good. And that is no good. So it is 30 to 12. Flowers is the man that broke it up. 5.35 to go. 29 yard touchdown pass, although you can see the knee was down, but a 30 to 12 makes little or no difference. And the only difference is they might have scored anyway and taken more time off the clock. Five and a half minutes to go. Now the Aggies, though, still not in that kind of danger, must be able to move the football a little bit to give the clock a chance to run down and keep their defense off the field. Look at, look at here. Now, if so you understand it, Texas A&M, when they've been the third down yardage, 7.9 yards to go. They've gained 8.8 yards. Texas, when they've been 7.3 yards to go on the average, they've gained only 2 yards on the average. Third down plays. Now we got an onside kick. Oh, down. here comes your onside kick. And it will be Jeff Ward to kick it off. I'm sure Aggie fans everywhere may be getting a little bit nervous. They've seen this kind of thing happen to them in a Texas game before. But remember, it's going to take 18 points to tie. Two touchdowns with two-point conversions and a field goal could win. Uh, here's where he hit the ball on the top of the ball, so it'll, I think you do anyway, so it bounces when it hits the turf and bounces up in the air. You try to top the football. He didn't do that. I don't I think they hit it before it went to 10 yards. I think a Texas man hit it before it went 10 yards. And that's going to give a ball back to them. They should bring it back onto this side, the Texas side of the 50-yard line. Now, let's see it. Now, the ball's kicked off at the 40. You can't touch it before it hits the 50. Jackie Sherrill's telling me, he says, hey, yep. wait a minute, they hit the ball. It did. I'm sure it did. I don't see a flag over there anywhere, Jim. All right, here's the replay. No. Now, there's the 40-yard line. The Watch. ball's passing the 45, and it's hit right, right there. Right there off his knee. At the 48-yard line. They're going to bring it back. Uh, Hagee. They're going to bring it back, Paul. First down, 10 yards. First down. That's a good call. All right, Jackie Sherrill had help a little bit with it, though. Well, it's first down, just the length of the ball into Texas territory. He's Jackie's down. He's telling the coach. Now, see, I saw that. There's no reason the official didn't see it. I got to help him out. I can't coach and officiate all in one evening. <laughs> Jackie had his 41st birthday on Monday. Happy birthday to him. And now here comes Sanders trying to turn the corner. And that's Jerry Gray. What a sure tackler that man is. No wonder he gets the all American credit. And the flag is down. Did he grab him by the face mask? Couple, couple flags. That's about what, all I saw over there. We don't, need, we don't need a whole lot of flags at this point in time. But you're right about Jerry Gray. When he hits you, you go down and you go down in a hurry. Face mask? We got what? They're still talking. We have holding by the offense. Face mask by the defense. The penalty is down. Let's see it now. Sanders is coming out here, and here comes Jerry Gray, number two. Watch this hit. Forcing, he'll come into your picture right now. And there's the bang, and there's the face mask. Also, we don't see the holding penalty, but we do see the... I saw the holding penalty. did? Yeah, I sure did. Want to run it back again while they're out there talking? I'll show you the holding. <laughs> I, I can be an expert now and then. I can see it. I like it. 5.29 left. Jackie Sherrill, boy, that 529, and you know it. Seemed like a long time to him. Nelson, wide left. Craig Stump has done an outstanding job tonight, running, throwing the ball, directing the attack. Hands the ball to Tony. 
fullback who's also had a good night tonight, and Braggs makes the stop as he gets across the 45 to, well, to mark at this side of the 45. We were talking about Jackie Sherrill and happy birthday, Jackie. If you take a look at last week's game, they win, Jim. If you look at this week's game, 30-12 to 12 right now, and they have the football. You can see this program turning around, and it's been, what, three years now, and that's the proper time limit for it to happen. And i got to point out what we've done already, that out of the 30 freshmen he recruited, only four are using their eligibility this year. That's 26 others waiting in the wings with 30 more to be recruited. Well, somewhere, they got that 90 million. There's Tony, and he gets nothing there, so it's going to be third down about five. But again, more time will go off the clock. And it'll be close to the four-minute mark by the time they get the ball in play. Leading Rice by eight, 31-23, with six and a half minutes to go. So they started 15 minutes after we did, and right now they're only in a couple of minutes of our playing time because of the length of this game. Third down and five to go. Nelson goes wide right, and Teal comes to the left. And here's Stump going the other way. Troy got a man wide open for the first down. That's Mark. Well, check that. That's Webb, the tight end. And Webb just makes his 13th catch of the year and comes up limping a little bit. Put down by James Lott. Got the job done, and the Aggies hold on to the football at the 32-yard line. Yeah, great call. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I really did. They didn't have to throw the ball. It's inside four minutes. They're moving the ball down. They could have just sat on it, punted the ball away, and the defense is doing such a great job. But Stump comes out and hits Webb on a, on a naked bootleg. That's a beautiful play. Look at 10 of 18. Whether it be because they ran away from him or Matt Darwin's great, great work, We've seldom called the name of the great Tony the Great tonight. He's not been a factor at all. Oh, look at this down the sideline. Sanders and Gray again makes a saving tackle. Gray had him pinned to the sidelines and stood in front of him. And Sanders is having a good night. Jim, the great block by Matt Darwin, number 78, the guard pulling out. He just buries the corner. Watch 78 on the top of your screen. Look at this. Goodbye. That's Stephen Braggs on the outside the safety. He goes right over. For him, they go down the field. First down. That's beautiful. I like it. Ball inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. 320 to go. And one of the shockers of Southwestern Conference play this year. It was a shock last week when Texas A&M knocked off TCU. But now looking tonight, was it a shocker? Is it just a football program maturing? Here goes Sanders again, and Sanders picks up a lot of. Got a flag down over there. Allard made the stop, along with Britt Hager. And Jerry Gray is complaining, so this may be against Texas. Jim, Matt Darwin again, the guard. This time he pulls again. Take a look at the right guard. We may be able to see at the end of the picture, right out to the right. He just knocks down, brags again, number six, puts him on his back. Oh. Allard comes up and makes the tackle. And you can see what it is. It's spearing by Britt Hager. And that's going to be ten big ones. The freshman out of Odessa, who is a hitter, came in. It Rice? is now Rice trailing by five with about five and a half to six minutes left in the game. And a dead ball, personal foul on the defense, a spearing foul, first down. Ball from the six-yard line, first and goal to go. Now if they score here, it'll be the most points Texas A&M has ever scored in this stadium. Texas brought in another linebacker. 28 January. Stump going toward the end zone. Touchdown, Teal. And that's the most points that an Aggie team has ever scored in the 60-year history at Memorial Stadium. And that completes the job. What a beautiful pass. Just lays the ball out for Teal. Teal runs underneath it. Over the top. Watch how beautiful this is. No chance for the defensive back, James Lott, to cover. Teal's got him beat by two yards. Out of the end zone. Touchdown. And now Eric Franklin comes on. He's had a perfect night thus far. Winds up with a perfect night. And it is 37 to 12. Again, when we see the touchdown, watch stuff. Throw the ball up in the air. Teal just runs by Lott. Just a nice 
soft pass. Stick your hands out, catch the ball for six points. Tell you what, Texas, after tonight, better look ahead to that Freedom Bowl. The way that things have gone tonight, that might not be a lock either. Well, we'd like to thank again all the members of the CFA, Chuck Nottis, Executive Director, Dick Schneider, the Director of Communications, all of the coaches that Paul and I and our ESPN staff have worked with, and all those sports information directors and the athletic directors. And we've been kidding a lot, but we do also have to thank our producer, Bruce Connell. We just saved his name to last because he's done the most. But it's been a great Saturday night telecast season for us. We hope we can do it again next year. No one really knows what's going to happen. The telecasting of college football after this year. It was a jury rigged thing that.